thank you for joining me here as we, um, oh god, this is such a good song, as we return to a game that I love very much, um, I forgot what the big plot point is going to be after this. Oh look, it tells you without even having to pull up their character, their 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 status screen, what Esper they've got equipped. There's a lot of little quality of life improvements that they've put into this version of the game, and I really appreciate that. I also read the G Google translation of an interview article with um with Umatsu and the composer who oversaw most of the, um, most of the pixel remasters, uh, rearrangements of the music. Um, and it was really neat to hear their philosophies as much as Google Translate could provide them for me. Um, so there's something symbolic about the fact that they chose to have a second pan flute here in this, in this overworld theme. It's supposed to represent, apparently, Terra's two halves, um, which I think is really, really neat. Um, I love it when that, that level of thought, I mean, I like to overthink everything, so it's always kind of delightful when other people overthink everything. And yeah, we had just finished the Magitech research facility. They changed the sprite of the, of the airship. It looks a little bit more like um, an Amano airship, I think, than I... It wasn't as clear, because I guess they had limited colors, so it wasn't as colorful. Um, so it was a little harder to see what was going on. It's still not entirely clear what's going on with it either, but... I think it has... Does it have a big helium thing on top and then like a little like boat thingy below that? Is that how it works? Is that how it works? Are these, um... What are those called? Blimps? Okay. I don't think I ever really realized that, because I even have an Amano art book that has some of his drawings of things, including some of his, uh, well, has a lot of his drawings, I think mean, it has some of his airships, dirigibles, I think so, which is a pretty steampunky thing, right? Or is a Zeppelin, maybe it's a Zeppelin, I don't know, a Zeppelin is also a sandwich, right? Okay, blimps, I don't know, clearly I am not an expert on aero technology. <laughs> um... But somehow I never fully realized that that was the, the setup of it. I should, I should know that and keep that in mind for how they stay afloat. Um, because, because it makes sense. Uh, airplane technology is sort of a mystery. <laughs> if I remember correctly, at some point, it's like we're not 100% sure quite why it works the way it works, but it does work. Um, so we can work around it. Science. Yay! Um, but having something that lifts you up, on the other hand, is much, much, uh, I guess, easy. Earlier technology levels, um, like a hot air balloon, for example, um, make, uh, make there be a lighter gas, a gas that is lighter than air, and that's what propels you upward. And it, it's much easier to manage than whatever crazy science they've got going on with airplanes. I'm not an airplane expert by any stretch, so please feel free to call me out if I'm completely wrong about that. But making a lighter than air gas is a, is a good choice, except that, you know, what happens if your balloon gets popped? Or what happens if it turns out that gas is highly flammable? You got some problems. But this is the world of Final Fantasy VI, so we don't have to worry so much about that. Yeah. Also, hi, Mockman. How are you doing? We're listening to the music and talking about, um, talking about Final Fantasy VI level of technology and how airships work. I should have figured that out before I started writing about airships, but I didn't think about that. So, I don't know, man. Alright, so we just finished with the Magitech Research Facility, which I'm sorry to say I was disappointed by the, um, the arrangement of Devil's Lab. I had higher hopes for it. I love so much of what they've done with the music in this game that when there's something that's kind of almost a dud, um, and it's not that it's a dud, that one wasn't a dud. It just, it was, eh? It 
was fine. Like, it was neat. It was a neat idea, but they didn't take it as far as I wanted them to. I mean, I guess they could have stuck a sexy sax solo on it. Um. <laughs> like this, see, that, that's because we're listening to the Narsh song is why I referenced the sexy sax solo. <sighs> All right, so we got Arvis, Bannon, and the Elder. A lot of things going vector. Well, uh, Sully's is gone. Trying to work out a plan to make use of Narsh's resources and Figaro's machinery. Yes, those are the advantages that we have. Here's our sexy sax. So you gotta have a sexy sax. Don't have enough troops to storm. We can't bring the battle to them. Oh, it is out of desperation that we open the sealed gate. I took the entire sealed gate thing out of Darkness and Starlight. I have simplified stuff, um, and we're gonna kinda see what I've been doing with that instead um, in this next chapter that I haven't written yet. Uh, well, I've started it. It's kind of a mess, but I've been focusing on on the audiobook, which is so close to being done. I just need to record my two guards dialogue, which I should be doing this weekend and Monday. Sunday and Monday. And then I guess two pictures and then the thing will be done. And then you can listen to my take on what happens in South Figaro and we'll just go from there. From, from, from here on out, it should be a much more efficient process because I learned a lot. This is the first real chapter of that that I've done. Anyway, I'm sorry. I feel like it's probably really obnoxious and people are like, oh my god, Lauren, why are you still talking about this thing? But if you are still here watching me, listening to me ramble about Final Fantasy VI and tolerating me talking about my fanfic, thank you. <laughs> I still don't know for sure if I'm going to play through this entire game. Um, I want to. I want to get to Dancing Mad, really. I want to hear what they did with Dancing Mad. Searching for friends? Okay. <sighs> Maybe I should speed run through to get all the music. Um, but yeah, so this choice to open the sealed gate, there's a reason why I cut this out of the story. Do you mind if I'm just going to criticize the story of my favorite game? Are we okay with that? Oh my god, meanwhile the sexy saxophone is out of control. Um, Alright, well I'm just going to do this. So anybody, anybody here sign up for me rambling about what I have objections to? in a, in a, in this story. Um, so, the thing is, the people who, who wrote Final Fantasy VI, I think, and as I said before, I feel like some of the things that happened in the story happened because wouldn't it be cool if we went to this location? Wouldn't it be cool if this thing happened and then they kind of had to figure out like, how do we make this work? Ugh, people will go along with it. But if you really think about it, like... <sighs> the espers do not wish to be used as weapons of war. They specifically don't want to be used as weapons of war. Like, they, they noped out of that. They, quite clearly and unambiguously, they were like, let's not do that. In fact, going into the gate and opening and, and, and taking espers from it is exactly what like one of one of the Empire's first first uh, first great sins. You know, it's one of the first terrible things they do. Also, hello meow cat Jeff, welcome, and Lily Zoe, yeah, yeah. I mean cool things are cool, yes. And in the case of like a Super Nintendo game where stories hadn't been as in-depth or detailed or dark as they are in this game, like, none of us stopped to question, like, I mean, probably some people did, but for the most part, like, we went along for the ride, and we're like, yeah, this is fine. Um, but, like, when you stop to think about it, it doesn't all hold up under scrutiny. The, the fact that they make such a big production of we want, we, we, we are no different than the Empire if we make Terra fight for us. But then they go out of their way to apply pressure to her. I don't know that I would quite call it coercion. 
but it's not entirely her choice at that point. You take a girl who has lost a lot of her memories, um, and hasn't really had much chance to develop her sense of self. You give her like the only the, the first people that have shown her kindness, really, since she was a child, a baby, and uh. And then you you say we want you to make a choice to do this. You should. Here's why you should do it. We'll be really sad if you don't do it. People might die if you don't do it. The Empire is really bad and they were bad to you and we're the, they're the ones that we're going to be fighting. And we'd really like it if you did it. And it would really change the tide of the war if you did it. And it would be great if you did it. So will you choose? No? Oh, okay. Um, well, I guess go back to talk to our people who are sad that you didn't. You know? <laughs> like... It's a lot of pressure, and it's not fair, frankly. It's not fair to her. I don't like that. Um, and here we are once again saying it's it's dreadful, it's terrible, it's horrible. But they opened, they, they sealed the gate that couldn't be opened. They sealed the gate that couldn't be opened because they don't want this happening again. Well, let's go open the door and ask them to fight for us. Um. Uh, sets are in locker in my party because I forgot to put more people in my party. I just came straight here with the people who are in your party, um, which was perhaps a wrong, uh, a wrong choice. Maybe I should load my safe. I, I, I assume I'll be able to fill my party out before plot scenes. Um. <laughs> trying to remember. Um. So, no, but the thing is, like, I don't know that there's implications that there are still espers and vector being held in rather terrible conditions. Well, but Zulily, I don't know that that's supposed to be... I don't know that we're supposed to be like, wow, Bannon. That's not cool, man. Why are you doing this? You know? Okay, characters will, will join... I guess the characters who want to talk will show up whether they're in my party or not. And I guess, in a way, one of the things that is interesting, and I've talked about this before, and I may have even talked about this the last time that I streamed this game, um, is that... When historical events happen that are sufficiently traumatizing, the culture that has been affected by those events will um, often work through those events as trauma um, for generations to come. Um, this is this is just as an individual will work through their individual trauma sometimes in the art that they create. Um, and so, if you look at a lot of Japanese media, there's a whole lot of reckoning with with uh, atomic bombs. Um, and uh, and what what goes into making the decision, for example, to to create something so utterly destructive in every way? Um, like, I think that there's it's no no accident that you you see that recurring in different ways. And so, in a way, I do think that. The, 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 the Esper's power, like this, this, this great and terrible power that must be locked away, like, it's obviously not like a one-to-one -one representation, um, but it's, I think, exploring some of those ideas that are, um, significant due to their cultural trauma, frankly. And I'm not saying that in any way, like, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm being dismissive of that, because it's, it's not anything to be dismissed. It's, it's, it's something that I think those of us outside of a culture where that happened um, can't fully wrap our head around what it, would, what it would do to you and your people to have that have happened. Um, and so the enemy has unstoppable power unstoppable power in this war that they are using to take over the world we are so desperate that we need to also 
pursue this unstoppable power and, 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 and pursue a second war of the Magi if necessary to stop the Empire from taking over the world. Like, it's really good and interesting stuff. Um, I don't know that it considers the consent of the espers. I don't know that the, 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 the storytelling, to my satisfaction, considered that this weapon of mass destruction we're talking about here is people, you know? People who have said, I don't want to be part of your war, in no uncertain terms. And it doesn't work out very well for them this time around either, you know? Um... Like, normally when you ally with someone, you get their consent before you start planning on it. And, and, and like, the gate is sealed! The gate is sealed! They said no. They must be made to understand. They must be made to understand that we need them. I don't know, the more I, the more, like when I think about it and the older I get, the less thrilled I am with Bannon. Yes, exactly. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing though. It, it is a boundary. It is a boundary. And it is a boundary that is not being knocked on to ask how they feel about this. It is a boundary that is being obliterated in the process of asking, hey, you wanna join us? And in the story, like, yes, they they do like seem to understand. Um, and it makes some sense that, you know, they perhaps they want to like avenge their fallen friends. Perhaps they want to rescue Terra. Perhaps they do actually care about what happens to the humans left behind in the world. Um, you know, all that is there. Um, and so like retroactively we can be like, oh yeah, they wanted it all along. <laughs> but from the point of view of where the returners are with the information that the returners have right now, like, <sighs> Bannon, really? And I know, I know, I know, it's supposed to be like, we are so desperate. If you'll remember when we stormed the Magitech research facility, um, when we, when we, when we stormed the Magitech research facility, this time we tried to storm the Imperial Palace, and there is a boss that you have no choice but to run away from, which does kind of reinforce the sense of desperation. Um, I, I don't know, and I'd have to wonder when I, um, played this game for the first time, because I don't remember exactly what I thought at this point. Um, but I wonder whether I felt how desperate we were about the Imperials. And there are a lot of things they could have done in the story that weren't completely disregarding what the espers want that we know at this point. But that's the plot point that they wanted. And I don't know that the people who made this thought that Bannon was doing something wrong, really, um, because he's so desperate. Um, and I do kind of understand the desperation, but I'm just like, like, oh, Bye, bye, Beast Practices. Thanks for coming by. It's good to have you for a bit. Um, and welcome, Blade Tiger. You haven't missed much. No, I'm just, I'm, I am taking, I am taking the, uh, the Final Fantasy VI story to task with things that I disagree, things that, that I would have done differently. <laughs> this is part of why I did this differently. I mean, a big part of it is that there's a lot of bouncing back and forth and back and forth. When you talk to fans of this game about this entire section of the game, between here and several plot points from here, they get fuzzy about exactly what happens when, because it's a lot of bouncing back and forth and back and forth and things that really kind of need to be streamlined from a narrative perspective. Um, but I would also argue that there's some things in it that I don't think work. Um, I, I will say one thing that, that they did that I that I didn't want to do is um, they wanted to make sure that you were desperate all the way through to the end, whereas when I reworked this, I gave some moments of victory um, so that I could then take them away. 
<laughs> ah, that's my back and forth. Yeah, well, I mean, like, if they want you to go to these cool places and do these cool and interesting things, um, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't... No, it's not, it's not the fact that they drew it out that is my objection. It is the particular ping pong ball form of, of storytelling that happens at this point. It is the specifics of the events that happen. We try this thing, it fails. We do something similar, it fails. We try this other thing and it's just like, why are these the plot points that you chose? And it's because they had cool places or cool ideas, cool images, and then they just kind of stitch them together, I feel. Um, so I think, honestly, like, there's some good moments, but this is the section of the game where it turns to mush. And then it continues to be mush for a little while. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I object to that. And I've spoken to a number of people and they always get these sections mixed up <laughs> when they start talking about, um, this, the, you know, the, 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 this, the sealed gate and everything following it for the next little while. Um, and the masa, all of that stuff gets, gets really mushy. Yeah. See, I only remember like two things in the second quarter of the game. And, and I, I feel like that's something that, that editing the narrative all up front if they had had time and skill and experience that that like now several decades later people have i think that it could be a much more cohesive story um but but it's it's not really that strong in this part of the game um and i love final fantasy 6 so this is not me criticizing it and saying it's bad um, especially for the time and what they were working with and like the standards of storytelling in games at the time like this is exceptional it's it's fantastic the cast is incredible the the powerful emotional moments are fantastic yeah well what i'm saying is that a final fantasy 7 style remake for final fantasy 6 would be neat but it would require changes in my opinion it would require changes yes everything between magitech research facility and thamasa blade tiger saying that's that's where i fall off in my replace like this section of the game, people, people have, I think, very, very valid complaints about the world of ruins, non-linearity, um, and how that, my biggest complaint about the, the non-linearity in the world of ruin is that it means that they don't have as many scripted conversations based on who is in your party in different sections. So a lot of the inter-character moments, uh, are a lot less powerful than they could otherwise have been. Um, and so uh, so that's an objection. Um, but people don't usually object to this section because they don't think about it because they forget about it or they lose interest. They lose they lose lose steam. They stop playing. Uh, they don't really remember they don't really remember it. Um, uh, yeah, Stormblood. I, I, I need to keep working on that. I'll put maybe I'll try putting a video out. I've been playing it a bit at a time. So there will be more of that <laughs> if you've been watching that. Um Yeah, like there's there's some other things that they could that they could do with this the seal the sealed gate and this whole section. There's a lot of things that they could do um to straighten it out. I am I'm basically <laughs> taking the sealed gate and the masa and conflating the two because there are opportunities to do so um and so uh so there's there's different uh there's different uh emotional beats because the peace with the empire then in in my story the peace with the empire comes from i'm sorry i'm just gonna be spoiling Darkness and Starlight. I don't know that anybody here is actually going to read it who hasn't already read it. I won't spoil what hasn't happened. Don't worry, folks. Um, hi, Axel. Sorry, we're at the part that you might find frustrating. <laughs> we're talking about flaws in Final Fantasy VI's storytelling and what I have changed or would change. Again, what I do in Darkness and Starlight is not necessarily what I think should be done in Final Fantasy VI. Um, it is just a version of things that made sense to me at the time that I was writing it. Um, so I'm in the process of writing the Thamasa section, so I will not spoil everything that's going to happen in that because that's a point where, like, as you can tell, there's some then some divergent diversion divergence from the original plot. Um, but but I am like like the sealed gate and Thamasa plot points are being conflated in in a way 
in that section because to me that makes a lot more sense. Um, and so what I wound up doing is um, after the Magitech Research Facility, that is the blow to the Empire that we have dealt it. We have taken out their source of Magitech to a large sense, to a large degree. They will no longer be as powerful or as unstoppable, which is something we bought with the sacrifice of losing Celis. So you have that emotional blow, which since one of our perspective characters is Locke, we get to feel the weight of that. Um, and uh, and so, so then we all work to like pull people together for victory, um, you know. And, uh, and, and so it is, it is because of that blow that we, the heroes strike against the empire, um, and the, the people of the world uniting against the empire that we're able to, to beat up the empire enough that they're like, oh, we concede, perhaps we should talk peace. Um, and then we go from there, um, and, and pick back up with some of the plot points of like, okay, um, the, the thing with Leo is a bit different. And I can't talk too much about what I'm doing with all of that, um, because that will spoil some of what I'm planning. But I had to really seriously rethink because I couldn't cut Leo out of the story because he's an important character for Celis's Celis's development. I don't I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just talking about my story. I'm sorry. I know, but I guess you're here. This is what we're doing. Um, but uh, but it is it is less of a Deus Ex Machina of of, of the the Espers. Um, bringing down the Empire because they've already got the pieces to have you strike that blow and you can feel that bit hi hi Siren Star I'm talking about darkness and starlight I'm criticizing the story of Final Fantasy 6 Siren Star is one of my one of my voice actors um, for darkness and starlight she is Terra um, so uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah so so and again, like, they don't necessarily have to have done what I do, but I do think that they would need to do something, and I would be curious to see what they would do. And I imagine they wouldn't, actually, because I understand it from... <clears throat> I don't really remember Final Fantasy VII very well. Like, at all. Um, so as I understand it, Final Fantasy VII Remake does actually play out point by point by point, for the most part. For the most part. Sticks to things as they happen in the original game. Um, and if they made a remake of this game, perhaps they would do the same thing. Um, and people would go along with it. I could have just done that. You can just be like, this is just how it is. And this is how I, how I say it goes, because this is the way the story goes. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, see, 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 and then so Siren Star music. So, so Siren Star and I became friends because we were both dressed. We were both cosplaying Sellies at a convention a million years ago. <clears throat> so when, back in the day when I was having lots of Final Fantasy VI conversations with super fans, she was one of them. Um, and uh, and yeah, and so she's, so this is one of the people that like, again, a super fan of the game, but some stuff happens. This is, this is the, this is the, the unclear section of the game. Um, I, okay, do I think there are too many characters? K kind of. Kind of. Like, in writing Darkness and Starlight, I've had to cut some characters or drop characters out that I would actually like to have done more with. I wish I'd done more with Gao, and I might still try to find a way to do that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I personally feel that a stronger, smaller cast is a good idea if you can't actually flush characters out from a plot and narrative perspective perhaps you don't need them but this is a video game and people like gameplay variety and that's what having the other characters provides and that's why some of them have so little um but uh but everyone has their favorites yeah like so at this point like i don't think they could cut down on the cast so uh, flush the ones out that you can perhaps um like, I mean, for me, there's like five main characters and I center around those five main characters. Um, yeah, well, so when we were trying to put together Project Esper, which was the, the um, musical theater audio drama that we were working on years ago, when we were outlining out what happened in this section of the game, those of us who knew the game really well were like, oh, yeah. And the people who hadn't were like, but why? Does, but, but why? Why are they doing this? Um, and, uh... I don't know. I think it's really, um, 
telling. So we're gonna get into the mushy part of the game. Was like, cause I was trying to remember like what are the plot points that happened here when I was when I was when I was. That's why I feel noticed like my stream description says like we just finished the Magitech research facility. Cause I'm like, what, what happens next? What a big plot point. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So like I would say Amaro is far and above the easiest character to cut. He serves literally no purpose whatsoever in the story at all. In fact, I don't even know that the characters acknowledge his existence, pretty much. Um, but people like him, so they can't get rid of him. Mog has a couple of lines, so Mog has more of a presence. Gogo apparently means more if you are a Japanese player familiar with Gogo from previous games. As an American player encountering Gogo for the first time, I really liked the fanon theory of Gogo as Daryl. It's maximum melodrama, maximum tragedy. Very, very good potential for milking that for story purposes. Um, but it's not actually supported by the text, but I like it. You know how that goes. Um, and uh, so those three are really like, those are the three characters who basically aren't in the game. You know, they're really not. Everybody else does have some emotional weight. Um, to their story. Um, like, I don't use Gao, but Gao's story is interesting um, in, in and of itself. He, he has an interesting story, um, but also his relationships with uh, with Cyan and Sabin are interesting, and I'd really like to have seen those be developed more. Um, you know, all the other characters have. Oh, Gestalt being Gogo. -Go. I don't think I've actually encountered that one before. Or Leo. Wow. No, because like Leo, Leo dying, sorry, spoilers, if you haven't played Final Fantasy VI, is a great moment. But, oh my god, they're killing Blow in the final battle is Umaro throwing Terra at Kefka. That's pretty great. Yeah, no, like that's the thing is from a gameplay perspective, it makes sense to have these characters, but they serve literally no narrative point whatsoever. They are solely there for gameplay. And I don't care about gameplay. So, go go is Gestalt. Okay, well that, I mean, that's an interesting one. I hadn't encountered that. I don't find Gestalt that interesting, is the thing. I really don't. He's the mustache twirling evil. He's the megalomaniacal empire, or emperor, like, um. <laughs> Yes, Edgar, Edgar should be using tools all the time. Like, in a, in a, like Kafka really is the interesting villain. <laughs> no, if, if, if they were to remake this game and be like, let us give each of these characters an interesting, compelling story arc, even if it's comedic, which I wouldn't like, but that's fine because other people like comedy and that's valid. Um, I'd like to see them do something. If you're not going to cut them out, make them belong. Make them earn their keep. Um. Oh, Bannon. Oh, man. Because yeah, Bannon just disappears and never comes back. And never, ever, ever tells you what happens to Bannon. Oh. No pressure, Terra. Yes, perhaps if we had fought them sooner. The baseline mirroring um, the melody is great. I don't remember if the original did that. Where Gogo -Go is Kefka's brother. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's just really beautiful music. All right, I suppose I should go. How do I get out of here? Oh, here we go. I think I already did the treasure chest room, didn't I? Didn't I already get the treasures? Or was that in a different town? What am I thinking of? 
Is this it? Ah, okay. Oh, thank you. I forgot that this is a thing that you can do. Hello. Oh no! Okay, so we go back and we get to choose between him and the hairpin, right? Alright. It's so weird. Everything... There's just, there's all these things that feel unfinished. Alright. Okay. Yeah, you can tell I sort of remember this. <laughs> like, I think I'm gonna go up here. I don't have to do anything right, should I, or should I go put characters in my party? <laughs> should I go put characters in my party to do this? Do I have to fight anything? I don't remember. It's Locke and Setzer. Oh god, I should probably put somebody to babysit these two. <laughs> oh. oh, are they? Stolen light. Actually, that would make sense because they both... They both steal stuff. They, they both steal treasure chests, so it makes sense. Ah, wrong button. God, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Also, so good. <sighs> oh my God, stolen light. That's a, that's a quote. Can somebody put that and like tag that in in our in our chat for a for a for us to add to the quotes when I add things to the quotes? Locke and Setzer on a trip will end up with them either owning the world or penniless and naked in a gutter. <laughs> You never let the rogue and the bard wander off on their own. All right, but which of them, which of them is which? <laughs> Are you gonna tell me Setzer's the bard? Oh, how is Setzer the bard? Okay, I'm with Zulily. Both play, but they're the bard. Neither one actually is. I'll go with that. <laughs> he's dramatic, yes, but he's in Final Fantasy VI. Everything is dramatic. That's why I love. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is. He did kidnap an opera singer. He does wear a flamboyant coat. He flamboyantly travels around flamboyantly in his flamboyant airship that is an over-the-top gambling empire. Oh my god. <sighs> Sets are honey. Oh, it's nice having guests on board. Is it this guy that I want? No, this is the shopkeep. Oh no, it's the guy who's up there who lets you take stuff off your people, right? Oh man. I'm not just sitting here playing games, I'm thinking of our next strategy. See, he's strategic. He's strategic minded. Oh no, I wanna I wanna hear what everyone I'm sorry folks, we're doing this. We're gonna talk to everybody. Okay. Just you gotta deal with this. I want to hear what everyone has to say. Edgar is a strategist, though. I have written him as a strategist, and he is because he's smart and clever and great. Oh my god, I am upset about Setzer being the bard. <laughs> oh man. If 
I had an airship, if I could dash into operas and sweep ladies off their feet, though? <sighs> Fine. Savage's like, I'm gonna punch it. Alright. If I were attached to things, I could never be a gambler. You're not attached to anything, certainly not. He's dealing with his trauma badly. Is he a high charisma rogue type though? Like, is he high charisma? <laughs> or did he put all of his points in luck? Is luck a stat in D&D? &D? I feel like it is. <clears throat> Locke is a bit of an idealist. He has, he carries hope. I love him so much. I mean, it depends. Bards can be rock stars. Oh my god, oh my god. Listen to the low brass. I immediately sent this to, to Danny because I was like, the game brass need to be aware of this. Also an optimist. We don't know what Celis is up to, but she's a pessimist. Yes, yes. I, oh, so the boys are over here. The bros are okay. So I bring Locke along because I love Locke. I'm sorry, he's not the best party member. But this is basically always my party except one of the girls. Usually Celis. Locke is. Not, if you want to have. Like, if you want to have the ultimate solid party as opposed to the ultimate, I, I cheesed it with, like, rages or whatever. Um, the, the, the solid, just plain good party is, uh, is, is the girls and the figure bros. That's, that's the party of choice. <clears throat> However, I pick my favorite characters. Oh, and they immediately have you go here. Equip everybody who's not currently in my party. Oh my god, have I ever mentioned that I like these characters? I've gotten into arguments with people about whether Locke or Setzer is worse. Just, just by their pure natural state. Because you can make anybody good in this game if you want to. Oh, she was not wearing anything. Should I give him? I guess I've got. I've got at least one of them. God, it's such a good arrangement. It's so good. I can't handle it. Bum, bum. All right. All right. We're gonna disembark. Okay, we've done that. That was fun. I enjoyed that. But he's got to have healing. <laughs> You gotta make sure that Locke is healing. He's your 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 potion pal. Alright. We are no longer sending Locke and Setzer. The rogue and the bard. Oh my god. <laughs> oh I should probably give Terra a magicite, shouldn't I? Alright, let's do that. Who's got mad? Who's got Madwin? You do. Have you have you mastered Madwin? The magic plus one is actually very useful on him, so that you can fire dance and bum rush. What are you working on? Magic up 10%. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You should get some healing. Whereas, who has... 
Shiva teaches you cure, by the way. Um, it's the thing that I leaned into in my fanfic because it is cool. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, let's get cure. Maybe with unicorn? Do I want to do that? Is that what I want to do? Oh, oh, raise. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, Locke's gonna be the one who dies the most often anyway. We, we know that to be true. I love him very much, but but it's true. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her this so she can learn some healing magic, more advanced healing magic. And then we'll give, we'll give her Madwin later. Oh, which way do I go? Is it this way? I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I guess it probably won't matter, but you attack. Oh, you, no, you got a crossbow. You blitz, I mean, it's overkill, but whatever. And you can attack, okay. Trance, that's right, it's trance. I forgot it's trance. Now we will be doing that from here for until forever in this place. Flash? Oh right, I forgot about Flash. I don't think I ever really knew that Flash was any good when I played this back in the day. Am I going the right way? I don't remember if I am or not. Nope, I'm not. Man! Don't trust your 30 year old memories of a game. Clearly. I was? Eh? Is there? Where? Am I blind? Oh, there is a door. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Silly sexy sax. I love that the music really seems like there's there's a lot of like old fashioned y like uh old fashioned y like movie music feel oh look at that background it's so good that's just there's lots of buckets all right and the moogle gets it pretty sure that sounds like a that sounds like a ted woolseyism to me this sounds very much like a ted woolseyism I got one step closer. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I wait. Okay. Kind of wild one. <laughs> Hold still, you little. <clears throat> All right. Do we get Mog? Do we get the gold hairpin? Gold hairpins are very useful. But Mog is cute. <laughs> I love how everybody else, everybody else, is <laughs> like Mog, 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 Mog. And Kronos like, is a nice hairpin. So late. I might use magic more if it didn't cost. I'm just, I really, I just, yeah. <clears throat> Games where you like recover magic points by existing, I'm much more likely to use things, but I just don't like. Oh, did my camera just fritz up for a moment? Huh. That's never happened before. Is there a ghost in the machine? Oh, gem boxes, economizers, right, got it. Huh. Interesting. Well, we'll just uh, keep an eye on if this camera is doing weird things. I don't want to have to get a new one. I just, this is my new camera. I just got a new camera. Why are you being weird, new camera? Hi, Phil. Welcome. All right. Well, let's get Mog.
Now I expect crazy solos from everything. Sorry, we're listening to this. So my friend Danny from the Game Brass and I did a cover of <clears throat> of the Moogle theme. The Final Fantasy IX version, I think it was. Um, but it was brass plus flutes, which... I mean, this is not entirely flutes, but it's a lot of brass and it's a lot of like alternating back and forth. He did the arranging, basically. I was like the consultant on flutes because did you know that a flute is actually almost as much like a like a like a brass instrument as it is like a woodwind? Um, <clears throat> it has the keys that play to make individual notes the way a woodwind is. However, the way you um, go between notes and especially octaves is um very similar to how you go between notes with the like it has basically it has harmonics um so you can do bugle calls on a flute <laughs> in a way that you cannot on a on um on a i think not every woodwind anyway um so we were like hey wouldn't it be fun if we did that and the moogle theme is a perfect fit for that because as you can hear it is a great just yes so this is good this is a good solid thing <coughs> well, it's got to do with your your lips. So you can play a whole bunch of different notes on just a Sorry. You had to know this was coming. We're going to clash horribly with the Moogle theme. Hi folks. I'm gonna I am Lauren the flute because I play flute. Uh, you all know that. But in case anyone here is new, hi, welcome. There's a flute in my name. Can you do that? on an oboe or a clarinet? <laughs> but you can on a trumpet. Anyway, yeah. Um, so that's your useless music trivia for the day. My cat probably hates me. Um, so yeah. Yes, I figured, I figured you would know because I know you play trumpet. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, Moogle theme. This is a good song. So that little, like, percussive line right there brings in, like, Mog's, like, Mog's 90s dude, which I don't know if Mog has 90s dude much in this version, but I feel like that's kind of fitting. <laughs> you can talk, that's true. Because the Moogles were hanging out with us. Is he like Meowth? He did in the print ads. Yes, no, I just wonder in the, uh, in the like Japanese version, I don't think he had any of that. <laughs> old dude named Ramu taught me your language, Kapo. Okay, so he's saying old dude, so I guess soon. I'm, I'm curious actually what. Because I think that uh, Japanese has more like clearly defined like m manners of speaking as opposed to the. Uh, <clears throat> Like softer definition of manners of speaking in a or, or softer differentiation of manners of speaking in English. Here, so being like an old dude taught me your language, like tells us right there that Mog is very informal in speaking. It's not a matter of honorifics, it's 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 the entire speech pattern changes. It's like how you have formal and informal speech in, in like I I know in French and I know other languages as well. 
Um, <clears throat> I think Japanese has different levels of that. Plus also like like the the pronouns that you use to refer to yourself as well. And it's all like, and then like, you know, also there's regional accents and things. But anyway, I would guess based on the English translation that we're being presented with here that Mog is supposed to either be young or like really casual or something. But Ramu doesn't, doesn't seem like the sort of person who would say old dude kept showing up in my dreams and telling me to help you. So I'm gonna help you. Fair. Moogles in Final Fantasy XIV have this like special magical connection that I don't really remember because they, I think that that was explained in A Realm Reborn. So I didn't pay attention. <laughs> that's how that's gonna be. All right, peace out, buddy. So I think that this was supposed to be a comedic, a recurring comedic thing where great thieves steal stuff from you. But they only put two of them in and they didn't finish it. And because of that, they didn't fully localize the humor either. But the fact that it's, um, Moogles hearing from an Esper would indicate perhaps that Moogles are magically attuned. <clears throat> and when was Ramu doing that? Was this after he turned to Magicite? Or did he know we were coming? Is this him being Magicite in our inventory and also, like, dream haunting a Moogle to be like, you should join these guys? Eh, who knows? Yes, Lone Wolf and Siegfried. L L Lone Wolf is late for his date with Siegfried. Am I going the right way? Yes, okay, good. Well, that was fortunately, it's possible that even Locke and Setzer could have taken that. Maybe. Although I don't know if Setzer was wearing anything, which is very in character. All right. <clears throat> Is there anything else we should do? Turn to this in a different version of the script. Where is holy water? Where can I buy holy water? didn't stop by the opera house intentionally, but <clears throat> all right, figure out what I leave you and whistle the whistle. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. She's so good. <clears throat> oh, it's then <in>. okay. <clears throat> That's on the southern continent. I love the number of people who can recognize that I'm singing Wander of Time. Oh, the brass is just so good in this game. I'm sorry, folks. That I don't like that change. I don't know why they made that change. Everything about it is good. <clears throat> How many of these do I need? I mean, I guess I've got lots of money. does something. Is 
It sounds less stately. Like it sounds more more uncertain with when they change the harmony there. That's what I don't like about it, I think. But otherwise, it's absolutely amazing. It's an absolutely gorgeous arrangement. It's oh, it's so good. I'm sorry, I'm just like over here yelling about how good it is, but do you hear how good it is? Do you hear how good it is? I don't know why I'm writing these, but No, the auction is a pain. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> right, is there anything else I need? Am I fine? Am I good? I feel like I've got more stuff than I've ever bought here before, so... Bad. I think it might just be that I'm not used to it. I think it works. I think I just had to let myself be okay with it. All right. So Zen is. Oops. I haven't even get used to people saying, um, saying, uh, Narshi by the way. And the whistling, the whistling just, it, it does really sound like a game show. It's, just, it's great though. It's really good. It's really good. I love it. Oh, this is Miranda. Okay, never mind. <coughs> the northern tip. Okay. Sorry. I should know this. I don't clearly. Okay, look. I messed up. I made some geographical decisions in Darkest and Starlight that have thereby thrown off my sense of everything. Here's Sen. Okay. They've had some bad times here. The town's youth were let off to serve in the Imperial Army. Yes, they have been conscripted. A royal family was slaughtered by the Empire. Like, hello. Oh, you can't talk to that kid. Okay. Hello. Can I not talk to you when you're on the staircase? This town belongs to the Empire. Yeah, we, we murdered everybody else. Now we're tromping, tromp, tromp, tromping around. Okay, there's no people here. You gotta check. Sometimes there's people in towns and I do not have memorized who's where and so on and so forth. The Guardian, it's immobile but ridiculously powerful. We encountered that. If you ever see it, run away and don't look back. Okay, so they do tell you that you have to run away because that's the only boss fight that you can run away from, I think. <laughs> Shut up. Defias and you'll regret it. Uh, what about no? Mm, I've already got some. Poison, darkness, and zombie. Do I want this? And if zombie is a problem, do I want to get a zombie? God. Oh my god, Chrono. Amazing. Oops, wrong button. Ah! Alright, I'm gonna put that on you. And, like... Prevents all status ailments. I've got a ribbon. I just noticed the higher pitched echo of the pan flute. Is 
This is much more chill feeling than the original version. I'm thinking about this one because this is the arrangement that I've been working on the most lately. So we'll put her on, we can give her an earring. There, we'll do that. <clears throat> Being strong against zombies, although you, you'd have to be careful who you put it on. Haha. <laughs> um, huge gate deep inside a cave on the eastern edge of the continent. Yes, that's where we're gonna be going. because I couldn't sleep last night. What have you got? Anything new? Ooh, new hats. Let's get some new hats. Or is there a reason why I'm not equipped with those hats? I guess those those ones, oh, it, oh, if this one gives magic defense and magic evasion, it's only one more point in defense, never mind. Now we're good. We're good. That's not enough of a trade-off, but thanks. All right. Well. I should I get him two boomerangs instead of what he's got and stick him in the back row because I assume that this is yeah should I do that should I do that is that your recommendation folks is that the the, the, the gameplay recommendation of the day okay <clears throat> how many do you need All right, lock. You're gonna be equipped with a boomerang times two, and then you're gonna be in the back. Oops, in the back row. Also in the back row. Also in the back row. I guess it's fine. She still shows up as Magitech Elite. Why does she show up as Magitech Elite? Why is that her? Why is that her class? That doesn't make any sense. All right. Well, we've done Sen. Wait, no, no. What, what, are we supposed to do something here? What are we supposed to? What did we come here for? I don't remember. Obey the Empire. What about no? Tumoring. Strung up for treason. Shady guy in the top right corner. Okay, hold on. Let's go find the shady guy in the top right corner. Oh, hey, shady guy in the top right corner. <laughs> I used a huge ruckus. Who could that have been? Okay, so there were some other magitechs. Ma or magicites stolen at that point. Okay. So what does Seraph do? Is, doesn't she teach? Does she teach healing? Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. <clears throat> All right. Shall we? I don't know. Do we have any new music coming up? Fortunately, this this is one that I that I know actually. No! Okay, well, it's fine. We'll just land here. It's fine. We can take five steps. We're fine. Uh -huh. Buttons, 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 buttons. I have a hard time with them. I need to sit better. My, my back is always hurting, so I'm going to try to sit like a person supposed to sit. All right. Imperial Observation Post. <clears throat> That's right, it's in a posture check. I will try to check my posture. Shouldn't stand around, let's go. Notice the dialogue is not <clears throat> attributed to anybody in particular because you could have anyone in your party at this point. Oh, thank you, Phil. My cat is not too fond of my singing, um, unfortunately, but I imagine that it's, it's somewhat, the effect is somewhat dulled when it's over speakers instead of right in your face. So they've got these banners that they put up. <clears throat> now I wonder if the banners resemble anything. Like any any like Japanese characters or something. Like I, I I mean they look with the colors, like they're very striking and very scary, and they look like something that like a totalitarian government would put all over the place. Um, but I, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a letter, if this is like a symbol of the Empire. You know, I'm curious about that. All right, your map was in the way of where it was supposed to go. 
Is there anything else I was supposed to do here? Because I don't think I can do anything there yet. Alright. Is this one of those rooms? I can get the treasure chest here, right? This, this place isn't going to be here. Provoker. All right. Oh, good. They take damage for existence. Oh, I should. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, good. Well, that's nice. Thank you for for de-amplifying him. All right. I will switch to Flash. I will take their picture. Oh, what? Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you mind? Do you mind? Do you mind? Ah, the worst. Okay, fine. I suppose we're gonna have to switch. To this one? Oh man. No, will you? Please knock it off, you jerk butt. Ugh, nobody likes you. I guess I'm gonna have to de empify. It's really pretty. That sounds like a science sword. Kaze Kiri? Alright, you are definitely undead. Hey, you look like something I fight on the floating continent, I think. That's probably a bad thing for me. I probably don't like that. Okay, yeah, you're gonna Oro Cannon. This is probably what we're gonna keep doing. You're gonna attack, and you are gonna use the flash. Alright. I'm just gonna do this for now. Yep, that's what I thought. No! Ah, okay. Well, that worked. Or rather, it didn't work. Boo! Oh, what? That didn't kill you? You butts. Well, it's okay. Let's take care of it. Yay! I may not be able to wipe everything out um, in a single turn. Yay! Magic up. Why not? He doesn't actually cast much, but why not? Yes, no, Sabin's good blitzes are magic powered. That is why he has the magic up, um, ma uh, magicite equipped. No, it's not puzzle. <laughs> it's, it's that they made the fire worse. And <laughs> I don't like it. Uh... Ah. At least you don't have random encounters here. Hold on. Ah, they do have random encounters here. Okay, never mind. Uh, no, I don't like you. Please stop. Everything about this is bad. Do you see this? I assume this is the background that they use in the Phoenix Cave, too, because this is what the Phoenix Cave looks like. For anyone who doesn't know, oh shoot, that was the right one up there. Okay, well, look, fine. For anyone who doesn't know, I have a phobia of fire. Okay. It is not my favorite thing. And like, 
It's one thing when, uh, when you're in the Phoenix Cave, which is really hard, by the way, but I'm like, the Phoenix Cave is super essential for, uh, for my favorite character story, so. Yeah. Oh, geez. Here? Nope. Uh, oh, my God. Please don't do this to me. I don't like it. No! Oh, why are there random encounters here, too? I don't like this. I have objections. This is not my favorite thing that's ever happened in a video game. Can she randomly turn them to stone since she's got stone breaker? Or does it... I don't know. Is this right? Yes. I don't know what that does, but... I got it. Yeah, no, like, this entire section of the game, like, does anybody remember it? And the answer is kind of no. But there's a lot of sections that people don't like this 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 area of the game I think is probably full of what is most likely to be forgotten. Did I do it right? Oh man. Okay, hold on. Okay. Now with this one right here. Okay, so go down three and then go to the bottom of that L. Okay. And then go to here, and then what? Hold on. Ah! Oh, you have to go all the way there, okay. There we go, we dashed. We did it. All right, peace out. Nobody likes you. Did I turn off the, the map? I did turn off the map, okay. Why is there still more fire? Why is there still more fire? Why did I forget that there was a second fire cave? How did I forget there was another fire cave? Oh, I don't like this. It's not my favorite thing. I really don't like it. It's a bad news. Tara learn regen. I do like regen. Oh, strength is no longer strength. Am I doing this right? Oh man. Oh my god. It's nice of them to be purple so you know that they're poison because purple is poison. Why is why is purple the color of poison? Somebody answer this question for me. It's dead! You go No! Oh my god! Ah oh, sorry. Ba blam, ba blam. No! It's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's all good. Oh, good. No. No, you killed him! I probably should have healed him. Then he wouldn't have been dead. Look. Well, fortunately, Tara can bring him back. <laughs> I'm good at video games. It's probably not the best use of my powers, but... Oh, really? Oh, interesting, Noel Girl. I didn't think there would actually be an answer to that. Okay, tell me if I go the wrong way because I'm gonna just try to get away. I'm just gonna get through here because I just really don't like caves or fire. And I'm really not a fan of fiery lava caves. And even if this one isn't as 
massively difficult, uh, like, because the Phoenix Cave is a huge difficulty spike. It's really nasty. Um, it's bad news. But it's the Phoenix Cave, so it's great, because it's where you get locked back. But this isn't the... So they just no... Oh. <sighs> oh good, zombie dragons. Purple is a stand-in for darkness, just making it black and not look correct. Yes, no, that makes sense. But yeah, so the color of poison corruption... But like, like, so my question is, like, why? Why is purple a color? But there, there's an explanation, because purple doesn't doesn't show up in nature. There are flowers. Are they poisonous? Are, are purple flowers more poisonous than non-purple flowers? Oh man, that's so much damage. Sabin, thank you. Yay! Edgar is leveling up a bunch. Was he below level or did I not notice that everyone else is leveling? Oh my god, how many Genji gloves do I have? Three? <laughs> I don't know. A million? Alright, just do it, just do it. Bam! Goodbye, zombie dragon. So I never liked the song Zombie with the Cranberries, but there was a sort of local pop punk band in the Dallas area that did a cover of it that got local radio play that was really, really good, and then I liked it. These guys are outcasts. Nobody wanted them. They were like, you're busy spewing poisonous fumes on us. Could you go away? And they were like, oh, we're such outcasts. How could you? Ah, okay. So there is at least some evidence of particularly poisonous purple plants. Come on. Come on, you had to give me points without alliteration. <sighs> Nobody's impressed. I'm so sad. <sighs> switch on a bridge over lava. Yes, yeah, which that previous switch on a bridge broke the bridge, so that wasn't much fun. Which buttons do I want to hit here so that I don't fall into fire, please? And thank you. Because I don't want to die. And fire, even though it does like no damage, it's it does psychic damage to me, the player. <laughs> Sorry. Oh man, the Atropa Belladonna. Oh, Atropa, Atropa. Isn't that similar to one of the the fates that cuts the cloth? Because there's Clothos, like Atropos, and Lachesis, out of order. And I feel like Atropos is the one who cuts the thread of the fate that cuts the thread of lives. And Belladonna would be what? Is it beautiful? Which of these switches do I push? Oh, hello. I guess I fight the ninja now. All right, so it's the pretty lady of death. Is that how that name translates to? Can I translate that name to the pretty lady of death? Because I totally will. Yeah, you show him. Yes, look at me. Look at me knowing something. No. All the treasure buried in the ground beneath the big stairway for my own. All right. The ninja dispenser. Does it make another ninja? <laughs> I don't know if I've, I don't know if I discovered that last time, but I don't remember it, so I am delighted by it. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh no! What are we gonna do now? Oh, oh, it was okay. No. Okay, is there a thing I have to be careful of? Do I just press both of these switches and maybe get slightly set on fire? Please help. For I am scared of fire and do not want to do this.
there's a save point. Hidden. You little jerks! You little jerks! Oh, how could you? Oh, that is nice of them. They're like, we're not gonna give you a bucket, but we'll give you a tent in case you need it. I'm fine. I should probably heal my party, though. Okay, well, I should probably heal Terra. I absolutely love everybody in your party having heal, so you could just, like, just cure everybody. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. It's all good. Who needs that full amount of magic? Probably not me. Let's see. Wait, is there another switch in here? I don't see one. So not the bridge switch. The fridge. Bam, bam, bam. This guide is unhelpful. I just use game facts. It disturbs me how old some game facts facts are though. It doesn't look like there's anything else I can do. It looks like I'm gonna have to switch the switch that switched to switch. It's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Bridge switch is necessary, okay. Maybe they mean the other bridge switch. The other bridge. I'm good with words. No! You took my life! You jerk! I needed that! She's my one! She's my character who I raised! I'm gonna do your feelings down now, you butts! I don't approve of that. What a jerk. What a jerk! Can you believe the audacity? Alright, Sabin. Yay! So there's treasure under the stairs. This is the big staircase. Oh, there's the thing in the ground over there. All right. I'm over here like trying to play like my flute part for this song. Oh my god, I miss my band. But we're gonna be releasing some stuff soon, so like, look forward to that. Okay. Oh, this is the ninja treasure. Oh, hold on. It's cute that it's ninja treasure, that the ninja dispenser ninjas we're gonna get. Is it a ninja dispenser? What? Why is there a ninja dispenser in your dungeon? Why are they called dungeons? It is weird when you think about it. The terms that we use, dungeon, boss, things like that. Like, where did that come from? Who thought that, that would be, you know? Why isn't there a ninja dispenser? I don't know. All right, let us open this. Hi, Ether. Bye, Ether. Oh, look at that, I took all your money. Ha <laughs> ha, ninja dispenser. What do you think of that? I mean, I know that it's a Dungeons and Dragons thing, but why dungeons? Why dungeons? Why is the place that you go into a dungeon? I know I've asked this on stream before, maybe even while playing this game, I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Excuse me. I'm gonna get through here. God, this music is so good. Oh man. Look at that. Look at that. Were they set in the literal basement of a castle or ruin? Okay, because I, I haven't played a lot of of of, of D and D proper, so. Ba, 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 da, da, da. 
Like, I've played mostly homebrew systems. I've played like decades of homebrew systems. This is too much. Can somebody walk me through this, please? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know this is Gaia X. I know that the D and D has 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 grown and matured and become way more, way more. I don't know. I mean, it's become more inclusive. It's become more diverse. It's become more. I don't know. There's a lot more to it, and that's cool. All right, thank you. Okay, so Axel's gonna be my guide, unless someone else is uh is already there. Thank you, Axel. You get to be the navigator. That means you get you get to call shotgun on this trip. <laughs> so that's that's the thing is if you're the person sitting in the front passenger seat, that's colloquially referred to as sitting shotgun in at least the parts of the U.S. that I've lived in. I don't know if that's a regionalism, so please inform me if that is not a thing where you live. Um, but you get to sit there, provided you are willing to be the navigator, usually. The guy in the chair. Oh, I suppose that's true. You're being, you're being, you're being the oracle, I suppose, instead. Um, I guess that's probably better, because you're, you're like, 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 calling in, like, the instructions and stuff like that. Yeah, well, we called it that in Texas, and I'm pretty sure my family in New Jersey calls it that, too. So I don't know if it's a regionalism, maybe it's an Americanism. I don't know if Canadians call it that, actually. I should check. I mean, I guess TV probably spreads things, even if they originally were regionalisms. Leave the switch alone for the moment. Okay, well, there you go, Blade Tiger. Thank you, okay. Otherwise, I would just go and ask some of the Torontonians near me. Because uh, I don't really ride in cars anymore because there's actually transit here. It's amazing. Go south to get the Ultima weapon. Okay. So, so my roommate is cool and she rented, I think rented, a horror movie that she wants to watch and she was like, I will wait until you're streaming because then you will not be coming into the living room to see any of it. Um... Which I think is a sign of a good roommate. Okay, so is is here? But did I did I did I do wrong? Oh good, lock lock learned raise. Good boy. Kaboom boom boom bam. Alright, so I assume I go in here and do a thing. Oh man, look at all these treasure chests. to the seal gate b3 hi ether bye ether all right god i really love that they have this autopilot mode now unfortunately this means i'm even less likely than usual to notice when my characters are low on health but that's okay well thanks for coming by phil it was good to have you here thank you for uh, for joining us and weighing in Chakra. Oh, I'm not using that. <laughs> Sorry, but no. Ultima weapon. Oh man! Do I equip that on somebody at this point in the game? Uh, I 
don't know actually. I don't remember the logic of Ultima. Is that the one that does more damage the lower you are on health? It was Atma weapon, right? And then there's also the Atma weapon that is the secret super hardcore enemy. All right, now what do I do? The higher your HP, oh, okay, all right. But the higher your max HP? Yeah! Goodbye! Oh man, I should probably give Edgar a different one actually. He's gotten a bunch of levels. And now he's got tons of magic, but I think I should probably equip him with something that's not Phantom since he's maxed it out. Oh, HP up, that'd probably be more useful. Oh, they spelled judgment right! Oh, I'm so proud of them! Nobody ever does that! Wow! Good job! magic plus one that strength plus one HP plus ten strength plus two mm. oops MP plus ten oh is it Zululi because I was taught that judgment with the E is spelled wrong even in American English um, and so as a proofreader uh, in the US, I, uh, I would always strike that as being incorrect. It's a common usage thing to be sure, and so it's the sort of thing that I figured would eventually become correct. But I didn't think it was technically correct. I thought it was something that was technically incorrect, but everybody did it anyway, which is how things change eventually. Yeah, that's that's that null girl. That's that's what I was thinking. Is that it's, it's technically wrong. So if you're proofreading, marking things that are technically wrong, you technically should change it. Um, but it is such a common and widespread error that um, it it might as well be be um, you know. So this is one of those things that I I I I, I would correct because it was my job to correct. Um, but uh, but it's, I figured it was only a matter of time before the dictionary starts listing it. Maybe the dictionary does. Um, all right. What do I do from here? I want the chest now. Okay, thank you. One could say something cross about the fact that Edgar is in the lead at the moment with that line. Is it? Really? Is this a case where we were like, that's an unnecessary... I mean, because that would make sense why I would take it out, since I've only ever proofread in American English. Um, but I thought it was technically incorrect to have the E there. So, I'm perfectly willing to be proven wrong, though, so by all means, if I'm mistaken, let me know. Fascinating. That must have been a case then where like the Americans were like, screw these unnecessary extra letters. Although that one makes more sense than having a U in things, so. Yeah, I mean, I basically just refer to it as American spellings and non-American spellings because basically everybody else uses the non-American spellings. I think, although, I don't know. I thought that I knew all of the non-American spellings, and then I keep encountering ones in Canada, like the word balcony, not balcony, story, like a two-story building has an E. And I was, I remember like, I was like riding the streetcar or something like that when I saw that on like the side of a building, like this is gonna be a new two-story apartment or something like that. 
The northeasternmost switch to get a chest. Okay. Um. Oh. I, I guess I probably want to flick, flick this switch too. Um. Yeah, that spelling of jail is similar to the spelling of Jeffrey. <laughs> With a G. Um. Yeah, it's very jarring whenever I uncover the spelling difference that I didn't realize was there. It makes me feel like maybe I didn't don't know as much as I thought I knew, you know? Like, oh, rats. Gonna do with me singing along a whole bunch. Bam, 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 bam. There we go. Look at all this strength. Lock is getting so much strength. Is this gonna move? Yeah. Okay. I figured if I just kept flicking enough switches, I would eventually be able to get to this treasure chest. Oh, I don't even need that. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it. But that's fine. That's fine. We're good. We we got it. Oh, I should heal lock. Hold on. Let me remind me to heal lock when we're done with this battle. Meow 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 meow. I should heal the whole party. Actually, now that I think about it, I do need to make the seal emote. Somebody remind me to do the seal emote. <laughs> I'm just typing the seal emote in text. Oh, we were not where I thought we were. Oh man, look at how much health my party has. Amazing, they're so good. I'm so proud of them. Look at how much magic Sabin has too. Sabin, how do you have so much magic? Oh, because you're slightly higher level. So the deal with the seal of hood, <laughs> because this is not the most intuitive thing. So most of the time I remember to save, but sometimes I forget. And I never remember to heal my party. I like never pay any attention. So everyone's like, oh my God, Lauren, your party is dying. Please heal them. So we decided to make a multi-purpose save slash heal emote that is a seal. <laughs> but I haven't made it yet, but I will. And then you can spam that emote to be like, oh my God, Lauren, you're going to die. And I'll be like, oh shoot, my party is down to no health. When did that happen? Oh man, speaking of seals though, here's a sealed gate. It sure does look like they don't want that thing to be opened. We got some nice particle effects with the uh, crackling, booming, lightning, storming, misting. You're right out, it's all up to you, Tara. So Tara's gonna go make her case. She's gonna be like, please. We are in trouble and the Empire has been torturing your people and destroying our people. Please come and save us. Unfortunately. There's a psychedelic clown here. This song is called Save Them. The drum kit makes this. Do you hear the really heavily distorted, distorted rhythm strums on the guitar? is so good so they're doing a lot of really interesting things musically with this one like the strings are up in the stratosphere playing their ridiculous little runs and there's a lot of low brass this is a score that really likes low brass which is great I really love what they're doing with the low brass 
Ba-chum, bum, bum, chum, though they've got. Which, come to think of it, I think that the rhythm guitar-ish pattern that they've got there is actually similar rhythmically. Because the thing that I just sang... I guess it's not the same, because I was singing something from the, from the Magitech Research Facility. But here... Like, they've got elements of, like, a really, like, really distorted rock band going on in there. I mean... Like, which is good because, like, that's, like, a mechanical sound. Not a mechanical sound. What's the word I'm looking for? It's a no, it's a non non acoustic instrument. It's a it's a, it's a technological sound, um, and they've made it really. Um, so because this is you know the, the 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 imperial technology coming in, and we've still got our like great sweeping strings, like we're watching um, watching an opera performance or something like that. But we're blending in that technological aspect, and it's really really good. Oh my god, the music is. So good. There's a few duds, but for the most part, it's incredible. And what they did with Forever Rachel is good. God, those guitars! Oh! Give them Tara, and they'll open the gate for us. And it's like, how, how could they have calculated this? But that's fine. We just accept that, yes, they gave us Terra, and therefore we opened the gate. Yes, this is very long planning. I can totally have anticipated this whole sequence of events. Um, it is a bit contrived in a way. Um, I'm going to pull potentially something that I also don't want people to ask about with Darkness and Starlight. <laughs> But I ask myself, I'm like, I'm over here like trying to make sure that everything that I do stands up to some level of scrutiny, maybe not a lot. Um, but like when you're playing this game, you're in this really big dramatic moment with this really dramatic music. That's an interesting question, Blade Tiger, and that would be a really interesting point, is what if Bannon of all people was compromised? I would like to read a fanfic that did that. That would be interesting. That would be that would be quite a take. But I think you might be able to make that work. Um, I also want to call out both how utterly gorgeous this custom background work here is. Oh God, I'm sorry. The drum fill there is just so good. Um, but this background is so 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 good. Hey, Jer! Oh, thank you for raiding! Oh my god, do you hear this music? What have you been up to, Jer? Have you been doing music? Hi, Jer! Hi, everybody! Welcome, raiders! Welcome! I'm Lauren the Flute. I am a VGM flute player, but I do a lot of game streaming. Um, we can't do a proper shout-out, unfortunately, because my, uh, my bot is down right now, Jer, but everybody should follow Jer. Um... Can somebody post a link to Jer's channel so everyone can follow Jer or, or Jer say something so they can click on your name and follow you? Jer is a pianist, a VGM pianist who does who does a fair number of music concerts and things as as uh, as, as, as streams. So you should definitely check him out sometime. Um, there was someone I was talking to about I can't think of what it was. But I was telling I was telling a friend about about Jer's covers. Jer has done um, a really, really, really striking version of, of uh, Otherworld from Final Fantasy X, but like as like a like torch song, like 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 jazz lounge singer, sexy lady sitting on a piano and singing it all smokily. It is amazing. Do we see Bannon after this point? Yes, Bannon is there for the peace dinner. Yes, this is the Pixel Remaster version. So Final Fantasy VI is my favorite game. So we're listening to this amazing song. It's very Oh, it was oh, it was Natalie's idea. Okay, well, it was really good, and you guys really, really killed it. Jer has also filled in. So I have a video game cover band called The Returners because I love Final Fantasy VI that much. 
Um, and Jera's actually filled in uh, at one show where our, our keyboardist wasn't able to play with us, um, and Jera's band happens to be in, ta- in town playing the same event. So on relatively short notice, he, he learns up a whole set of music for us. Thank you, Jared, including Fan of the Opera. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> um, yeah, so Jared's great. Thank you. So, yeah, so I do a little bit of everything. Um, mostly these days do game streams. I'm playing through this, my favorite game of all time, on stream, um, mostly listening to the music and what they've done um, and talking about that some, but also like there's some other small changes and things. So that's been really uh, a, a delight for me. Um, but I also, I also do music concerts occasionally. I'm hosting a concert on my channel with multiple friends performing on, uh, April 10th. So there'll be more information on that. Um, and, uh, and also I'm going to be performing a concert for charity, not on my channel, but my channel will be hosting it today. So I will be doing a set of mostly video game music, but there'll be a lot of other things. And today's charity concert is to raise funds for Equality Texas. I grew up in Texas, um, uh, specifically to, to help them with their work supporting and protecting trans kids in Texas. So if that sounds like something you'd like to take part of, follow this channel um, and follow us. We're going to go raid that channel even though they won't be streaming just yet when I'm done just because I want to make sure folks know where to go. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I like music too. I have played my flute a little bit on this, on this particular Final Fantasy VI stream. Uh, playthrough, but not a ton, but I do sing along constantly with the music. It's really good. So welcome. Let me know if you've got any questions, but I hope you enjoy your time here. Um, and if you like what you see, I do a lot of talking about stuff, um, but if you like what you see, you like what you hear, please feel free to give me a follow. And everybody give Jer a follow. Thank you so much for the raid, my friend. Um, so we're talking about the possibility of Bannon having been a double agent, because this line here, give them Terra and they'll open the gate for us. We have no choice but to open the gate, says Bannon. Um, I don't know that the text necessarily wants you to believe that. I don't know that that's actually what they intended, but it is certainly an interesting reading and it does follow some logic. Like it, it's not a completely out of place suggestion. I find it really interesting. So thank you for, for pointing that one out. That's interesting. How is our audio balance on something this loud, by the way? I assume you can still hear me okay, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, God, it's such a good song. It just, it just, it's gorgeous. I think that this is probably a completely custom background that doesn't, uh, that doesn't show up anywhere else. It's very specific to this moment, but this is such an important moment. We can't do proper cutscenes because we are not at a technological, technological level where cutscenes are a thing. So instead, this is a way of getting you to feel what's happening. In other words, you've been playing into our hands all along because this would be them giving us Terra at the very beginning of the game, I think, um, which is interesting because a lot of factors. Yes. I, well, no, I didn't use a font mod. Actually, what I did, there's a really, really easy trick where you just um, move the English font out. Um, clone the Japanese font and rename one of those clones as the same as the English font. And there's apparently English text, um, like this font, it packed in with the Japanese text. So it just goes to that. So it's, it's very, um, it's very easy to set up because I'm, I don't feel like doing mods. That seems too complicated for me. <laughs> so I did this and it worked great. It's a readable. It's a much better, but it's not like the original Super Nintendo font, which some people like. Um, but yeah, so you've been playing into our hands all along, like that's the long game, which if Sully's had been intended to be a traitor, that kind of feels like that might be overkill and too much. Oh no, Twitch chat disconnected on the raid. Okay, well, welcome. Even if you're late for the raid, you still count. We still feel rain. Uh, Kefka claimed that they let Terra escape so she'd open the cave. Someone seems to agree with you. This is a little hard to believe. Yeah. Well, so there are interesting stories that could be happening there. For example, if Sully's had been intended as a double agent and then she kind of fell in love with the returners and a, and a certain returner in particular um, and, 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 and had second thoughts about being a traitor, that would be a really fascinating and compelling story, but that's not really the story that they've told, but they still almost have pieces of it in there. Um, 
And, uh... Like... So which I'm not, not surprised that that was like a thing that they had originally intended, but they didn't. They didn't wind up going through with it. But they didn't fully take it out. So it, it's a thing that it's a kind of a it's kind of a a sticking point. Um, <laughs> if only someone told that story, Taladar. Are you are you referencing? Have you written a fanfic that does that? Um, yeah. Well, so but it's actually it's a sticking point for the fans about why on earth do they talk like, like why do they say, oh, Sully is, 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 has, you know, betrayed you? Why, Sully's is not actually a traitor. Sully's is actually, um, actually on our side. Like, is she, like, is people, people are really, it's really unclear and people find it frustrating. And then they're also sometimes, like, this is how I know that it's not that that's the direction because other people are like, how on earth could the returners possibly believe that because there's literally no evidence it's completely contrary to everything that she says and does for the entirety of the point that she's in the game um and and so people will talk about that which which to me just sounds like they kind of maybe kept sections from previous scripts in one place and they don't quite line up right and i love this game so 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 much so much so so much like more than i can say um but it has some narrative issues and I would expect that they would have to resolve these in some way if they were to do a proper remake, which some people are clamoring for, but I'm like, you realize they'd have to change things. Um, yeah, but like in that case, like it retroactively makes sense. Um, in this case, it doesn't, you know, there are some things that they try to figure out in that game that make sense once you have that big reveal, but there's, there's nothing in this game like that they left in, even if they'd intended it. And so, yeah, I know it does feel like it's a story that was written modularly, like, like writing chunks, having ideas and all of these ideas are good. There are, there are a lot of really interesting, compelling things. Like I said, that would have been a really interesting story. But that would have been a different character. Sully's would have been a different person if that had been her story. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe that could have been like they, 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 they wanted you to think that Sully's was the traitor, but actually Bannon is the traitor all along. But the game, like the story doesn't do that either, quite, you know, um, as interesting as that is. And it would be really interesting. That's not the story that we're given. There's all these bits and pieces that could come together. And we as children especially never, um, we as, as, as children never, uh, never questioned it, I don't think. Well, I mean, some people did. Some people were like, is she a traitor? And some people were like, why would they think she's a traitor? She's clearly not a traitor. Um, But it works well enough as you're just playing through the game and stuff is happening. It's very exciting. This is a very exciting and dramatic moment that we have completely come ground to a halt on because I was distracted by the music and now I'm distracted by talking about the story. But most most of the time when you play the game, that doesn't happen. But I think that these days, I, I would want to see more thought put into that. So I don't know. I don't know. And it's not bad by any stretch. It's just, it, it feels like they may have taken a few different things and just kind of pushed them together. Interestingly, though, they had extra time. They finished, they, as I understand it, they had extra time when they got to the floating continent, which is why there is a world of ruin that wasn't originally intended to be a world of ruin. I don't know. Game making is very different from like the linear process of writing a book, which like I write things like in chunks like that as I have ideas, but then I have to go back and fix them and make them fit and line up and stuff is what's been interesting about writing the fanfic is that I post it one chapter at a time. So sometimes I wish I had done things a little bit differently because I don't plan it all out in advance and I don't outline and I have departed from the story enough that it's kind of become my own story. If you haven't noticed from what we've been talking about now that we've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh yeah, this is where I've, I've deviated a little. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't, uh, that's the thing, is, is it doesn't quite line up with Speed Whispers. They could have made it work. In this story, they could have made it work. Um. Uh. Yes, we're about to do, 
I'm about to write the chapter that is kind of a Thamasa sealed gate. So we will see if I am able, because I, everything has been building to this and everyone has been like, we're really curious to see how you pull it all together. So no pressure, but this is the chapter or, or, or getting to the getting to the chapters where we see whether I did or not. So, um, yeah, no, Axel, I think that's right. The best choice was to make the world of ruin rather than backtrack and try to go in and add back in the things that they had cut or changed. Um, I don't know. So I would like to see what a director's cut feeling version of this would be with all the stuff that they didn't quite do. Um, even though some of these seem like these were plot decisions that they, rather than things that ran out of time, plot decisions that they decided against. Maybe they fell in love with Sully's not being a traitor. Because to me, she comes across as very honorable and noble and trying to do the right thing, despite how, I'm, obviously I have a bias, and this is very much how I've written her, but you know, despite having been raised in a totalitarian, imperialistic government, or, or a country, um, like, by, like, by, like, the army, um, she still manages to have such a sense of justice that she's like, wait a minute, even at a young age, because she's 18, wait a minute, this is wrong, and I, I will put my life on the line to try to stop it. Like, that's really cool. That's really cool. The, the general who pretends to be a traitor so that she can be a double agent is also cool and interesting, but it's completely incompatible with that interpretation of the character. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, it's interesting, but in the meantime, we have fanfic, which can fill all of these holes. I have no business with you. Open the way to my promised glory. So even now, Kafka has everything centered around himself and what he's going to get out of this, rather than the Empire. Um, he's dangerous and out of control. Gestalt thinks that he can control Kafka. I love the extra colors on his sprite. Just... He looks more like Kafka than ever before, and I think it's great. This is just dreadful. All right. All right. I'm... Yeah, well, the thing is, if Sally's were a double agent, it would be that it would be, um, she would have a different personality. Oh no, please don't murder me. Oh no, naughty, naughty. The door is opening! Oh! 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 Oh, that's interesting. So she's asking them. Even though they specifically said once it is sealed, it will never be opened because the Elder is dead. The Elder will die, the only remaining Esper of the bloodline that can open the gate. Dies er, closing the gate, so it will never open again. And here it is, it's open. Who knows why? Maybe they explain it. Uh, maybe it's the maybe it's the um the the medallion that she wears. But got a bad feeling about this. We sure do love Star Wars. Everybody's ducking. As is that Bahamut? That first one. You definitely don't want to get hit by, by Bahamut. At least traditionally, he's pretty scary. Was the bloodline Madwins? Is the is the elder related to Madwin then? I don't know that it ever says that. I oh, you get the, the melody and the low brass over here. God, the guitars are so good. I don't recall there being guitars in the original, but I have no complaints about that. But yeah, this is a very dramatic feeling moment. There goes Fenrir. I don't remember what that one is. There's another Shiva. Because we only have so many sprites. Uh, hi, Terra. So they go crazy when they come in. It's just generally bad news. And then the gate closes because the rest of the espers are like, no. We do not want you to do this again. Please do not do this again. We will prevent you from ever doing this again. We said no. Yeah, the Final Fantasy VI soundtrack is possibly my favorite soundtrack. It's up there. Where did they go? They went to go smash up Vector because they could tell that their friends had been tortured there. And maybe Tara was able to tell them a little bit of that. 
All right. Oh, don't make me have to walk back. I don't want to go to the fire. This is a shortcut, right? This will just take me out, right? I can just go, right? Can I just not deal with the fire? Please tell me I can just not deal with the fire. I'd rather not deal with the fire. I'm just gonna go out, and if that's the wrong that's the wrong action, so be it. Oh, I thought that was an exit. Is it an exit? Is it not an exit? Oh my god, I have to fight some liches. Oh no! Please kill everything. I don't know what she did. Yeah, I think that is the cave exit. Because there's a few... I think the Phoenix Cave also has a thing that is like a relatively relatively easy exit. Oh no! Don't set me on fire. I'd really rather you not. Why? Okay. We're good. Alright. I should... I mean, I'll probably be fine. But uh, just in case... Let's try not to die, shall we? There we go. Yeah. That was, I believe, in the original. So now we have no choice but to go through here. God, oh my god, it's such a good song. It's so good. <sighs> the pan flute is so beautiful. So we go through here. So this is, forces us to see if anything has happened. I really, really have trouble with running in this game. When do you come back here and can get stuff? Do you get this from somebody in Vector during the peace talks? Somebody like give you a key and say go to the... God, the... Here we go. Alright, there's more party members. I know I've already talked about the different components in this and how well the they work musically to set the stage of what it is, but... Okay, so the rewards were getting enough points at the banquet. Okay, I thought so. The Espers all flew off together. The Imperials ran off too as if they were afraid of something. Towards Vector. Alright. We're going to Vector. Oh my god, those guitars! Their anger. That would of course be the part that I would have to play as the flute. Oh, getting points is easier in this version. Nice. They were angry. She's trying to tell them, please don't go kill everybody. Why are we shaking? Setzer? Oh, shoot. This is bad news, everybody. The Unforgiven. Having a really good new fire effect on the airship drives us home a bit more. We're gonna have to do a crash landing. Let's try not to die, shall we? This would, this, this is, so this is like back to back high drama excitement. So you don't stop to question any of the narrative moments that happen because it's, it's a, it's a, like a roller coaster. Like, and you are going downhill at like top speed. It's very exciting. And they're really kind of like pushing like the visuals. They're using what they have, making it feel like you're crashing. 
like they can't do different things graphically so they take what they can and like use the graphics they have access to in a weird way to make it really effective hi christopher litz welcome and enjoy your lurking we are at the point of the game where i criticize the story the most heavily but with love um go back to the blackjack after the banquet yes we will do that chrono that is a scene that i don't think i've ever seen as a kid but i am familiar with it now yes who who needs fluid narrative when you have mode seven? Oh, running mechanics. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, yeah, so it does totally have... Hold on. Hold on. It does totally have the, like... This thing ab above right here. The blimpy thing. Okay. Oh, God, it's such good music. Oh, Gao doesn't like heights. Okay, they updated some of their graphics, but maybe not all. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here's where we go to, I guess, I guess this is where we go to Miranda. I said, hey, Landon, you can walk away from her. I suppose that's true. So you come here and do the people of Miranda. Yeah. They're too busy being sad about the state of things in Miranda to, uh, to comment on any Esper madness. Okay, you're gonna attack. You're going to go back to, yes. Uh, you're gonna attack, and you're going to flash. Apparently. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, and so they've got a lot of like, like the individuals. <laughs> the individual pieces here are really good. Having a peace banquet is really interesting, but I would rather have seen, obviously I would have rather have seen, because that's what I wound up doing, I would rather have seen the peace banquet be something like as a result of the characters, of the story, of the things that we're doing instead of arbitrarily, you know. Um, but at the same time, you do want to bring, you know, I, you do want to have like the, the story with the espers too. So it's like, I don't know. I, I also have to say I think it's funny that we have a banquet with the uh, with the folks who are infamous for uh, the folks who are infamous for poisoning people. <laughs> you know they've done that a few times. They poisoned the king of Figaro, <laughs> and then they poisoned the entire nation of Doma. Like, let's definitely eat some food that they cooked. You know. <laughs> so let's go in. It's funny. Because, uh, sorry, I'm going to talk about the stupid story that I've written that is the Final Fantasy VI narration, novelization thing, a little bit. But so when I was a kid playing through games and reading books and things like that, because of the way my imagination works, sometimes I see a place, I would like see a place in my imagination as though I'd been there. So there are certain sections in certain games that I have like a first person 3D impression of, even if it's a Super Nintendo game. Because my brain, maybe I had a dream or something, a daydream or whatever, my, my brain filled in the gaps. Um, and so when I write, um, I have to kind of be able to visualize a space like... So I've had people tell me that my writing is kind of visceral because I put you in the feeling of being there and what you see and do and so on. Um, but, uh, but I had to figure out how Vector would work. Because I wanted all of the places that you visit in the story to feel like actual places. They don't, they're not like watertight, like, you know, 
the, the, the history and the geography and, and so on are not like perfect. Um, but there's been at least some effort there. Um, and so consequently, I have in my head a really strong idea of what Vector looks like and what it's like to walk around Vector. So it's funny walking around it in the game again since I've written that part and being like, oh, oh look, it's on fire. Maybe this isn't good. Yes, the, the Narsians have such an interesting, like distinctive look. What in the world happened? And yet it is a little bit contrived. But you're not supposed to stop and think about it too hard. Um, but if you want it to hold up, you have to think about it. Is there anything good here? No. Um. So, you know, Vector having problems and things like, like all of these pieces are good, but they don't quite work. All right, so I suppose I should get on with talking to people and doing things and so on. Oh, they don't expect you to talk to all of these guys, so they just have a couple lines of dialogue. I, I, the, I mean, if, if, if you want to see what I'm talking about, like, you can read the story, but, uh, but it's just, like, that's just how it is. So I just have this really strong impression. It's fires in, yes. It's interesting coming here and seeing just how devastated it is and, like, where are the locals? Where did they go? There were people here. This is, by the way, the place where they talk about Kafka going mad from the experiment. So... So if you want to go for yourself and, and hear that bit of trivia, that is where you'll find it. Man, Vector is wrecked. It was like this when we got here. All the returners came here to see what happened. They couldn't have. Vector, oh my god. Could they not have? Is this not what you wanted, Bannon? Is this not what you were hoping that they would do? Deliver destruction to your enemies? Seriously, that's not what you wanted, friend. Really. Yeah. Well, so Bannon has this playthrough kind of unimpressed me as the leader of the Returners. Um, I don't know. It would be interesting for the leader of the Returners to be allied with the Empire. But I like the Returners being the scrappy force fighting up against the fighting against the Imperials despite overwhelming odds. Like I feel like thematically that's more consistent with the uh, with the, the the intent of the game. I mean the whole point of the World of Ruin, like emotionally, is like we could just give up, but we won't. Um, which I think is very powerful. Um, and to some degree, I think that um, that's kind of, that would be undermined if Key were, if he were a traitor. Hello, the emperor is expecting you. That's not concerning. Last time we came here was bad news for us. All right, this is this big, cold, imposing, you know, entirely constructed of machinery with no organic spaces or anything anywhere you know there's there's no 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 trees no grass nothing living nothing soft does it i was trying to figure out what the flag looked like earlier and i don't know i don't know what it's supposed to be and i don't know what style like, i don't know if it's like supposed to be like a hyper stylized like character or what um but it's very clearly representing the empire espers that came out of that gate tore the empire to shreds. I've lost the will to fight. 
The Emperor imprisoned Kafka after he learned about everything he's done. Or does Gestol know that that's what Kafka's planning and that's why he summons Leo back when he does? The rest of his life behind bars. The war's over. Really, we say. That's exactly what we want. Peace, huh? They're like, no, do not go back there. He really looks like a dog. Specifically a beagle, I think. Hello, Sid. And your even more ridiculous looking yellow raincoat. And so Sid said he was going to tell the Empire Emperor to stop fighting. Because he really thought that maybe he could be listened to. Oh, Sid. When they learned that none of them were alive, they ravaged the entire city. Yeah. So they are... They are dead. I had no idea. They'll destroy the entire world if we don't do something. We're helpless against them. So we have given... We now have an enemy to unite us against. Something so powerful and devastating that we must unite forces. However, we will, we will, un you will, we will unite our forces in peace and go to them in peace. Yes, but this is nice. This is good. This is interesting. Like instead of us banding together to fight it, we're going to, we're going to oppose it. We're going to end the conflict. Never lust after power. We lack the means to con control. So if we don't have the means to control it, if we do have the means to control it, then we should absolutely lust after power. <laughs> huh. Huh. Friend, let's have dinner. Four minutes until dinner. Okay. All right. We're going to talk to everybody. Probably should have saved, but whatever. I did talk to some of these guys. Oops. All right. There's some outside too. I guess we might as well get them while we're here then. Then we'll go more inside. All right. Hello, friend. Ah, shoot. Okay, cool, we got a level, nice. If we have trouble, if I, I've killed too, pe too many people, I can never return to a normal life is indeed a soldier, a soldierly uh, issue. All right, we're just gonna try to go in everywhere, try to talk to everyone. Hello, guys. Yes, he's locked up. Yes, we're gonna rescue their friends, but the poison Doan. Okay. Speed him up, guys. Speed him up. Oh, I should probably not do this one. This one takes too long, isn't it? Oh, well, that's fine. I'm gonna begin peace talks with the returners and other nations. Okay. The Magitek Research Facility's been shut down, and by that we mean we kind of blew it up. Who on peace? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I should probably not have done this one. Sorry. Some people can't be pushed around. I don't know if that's a uh, toilet joke that I don't get. But that's fine. I don't need to get it. I don't need to get every toilet joke. Ah!
Bum, 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 bum. Ah! Get out of my face. See, they're not all happy about this. Kafka's scum, it serves him right. Like, it's nice for some of them to be scared of him. Lost my whole family in the war. Like, this is good stuff. Or ended before I even got a chance to use this thing. Kafka's been thrown in jail. I have to join up with the likes of you. All right. Oh no! You muted me. That's the worst. Well, too bad for you. You're going down. Bye bye. All right. You're strong. Maybe we can do something about the espers. All right. So we've hit the 20 soldiers. I am immune to silence. That is, in fact, why my band's uh, first album is named Immune to Silence. The references, being immune to the status. Yes, I wanted to talk to Kefka. Where is he? Look, what did you guys think? But I guess they only had... Where is Kefka? Using poison, how low can you go? Where is Kefka? Hi, Skaploody! I'm trying to remember where Kafka's jail cell is. Next door? Oh, is there another door? Oh, I've got a minute left down the hall. Okay. I love how they've all got just like little toilets sitting in their little rooms. I don't know why. Why do they have so many toilets in Vector? That I did not put into my interpretation of Vector. Oh, is it here? Uh, yeah. Here we go. All right. I kept this scene. I just can't believe it. He's... Somebody was trying to say last time that he's not crazy. What a bore. Jumps on his toilet. All right, Can we go into the other, yeah. <sighs> oh my God, game. <sighs> Always wash your hands. All right, they were really proud of themselves. All right, we did it. We talked to literally everyone, I think. So that's good. Listen to that brass. Sorry. They just use brass very well in this game. I mean, this is a somewhat forgettable song, but it's a really nicely done version of it. All right. Oh, did you hear that little run? He looks like he's wearing a raincoat, doesn't he? Yes. Sid's, uh... Oh, did I hear that splat? Did you hear that piccolo? Sorry. Music. It's good. Piccolo. Sorry. Do you hear that piccolo doing crazy piccolo stuff? I'm just distracted. I'm just distracted by the piccolo. Anyway, not everybody here wants to listen to the Piccolo. Do we have guides or brains? Oh my god, Piccolo. All right, so Sid is sitting with us because he's our friend. 
Sid is like, perhaps war crimes are bad. All right, sharing a meal at the same table. Let us make a toast. To what shall we raise our glasses? I believe this should be to our homelands, which is honestly the kind of the obvious choice, if that makes sense. To our homelands. I've imprisoned Kafka for his crime of using poison against Doma. Should be done with him. Leave him in jail, I think, is the right answer. Because pardoning him, no, and executing him, we're not that bloodthirsty. Maybe. Yeah, strappy strap. That's step. That's a uh, step. A step. That's that's something that I I find like I can't. Again, we just go along with it. Of course, they're sincere. So they would never poison us. It's not like they've ever poisoned anyone ever. I'll decide what to do. No one ever dreamed Kefka would use poison. Do you think Gestal knew? Do you think Gestal knew? What's the correct answer here? Yeah. Yeah, neither neither letting him off the hook or demanding anything like aggressive. Apologize again would be. Um, but this is the just the statement. So terribly sorry. Punish him severely. Work to eradicate poisons from the world. I don't remember that in the original translation. That's pretty big, Gestal. Regards to Sully's. We don't think that she spied. Kefka was lying. Yes. The timpani. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Timpani is a great drum. This The instrumentation on this is so good. I'm really, really enjoying it. You might be able to tell by the fact that I'm just yelling about it a bit. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, that's, that is what it feels like. That's what it feels like. He summons Leo back with perfect timing for that. And yes, he still calls her General Sully's. But that's a thing that I that I kept. Um, anything else you wanted to ask? Surprise Pikachu face, yes. Surprise Pikachu face all around, indeed. Ask all three questions, but don't repeat any. Why did you start the war? My foolish lust for power. I've come to my senses now, 20 years later. <laughs> All it took was losing. I still have a few things to ask. Why do you want peace now? Working together is our only hope. He's very clever, yes. <laughs> Mugen Hunt, thank you for following. Hello and welcome. I hope you are enjoying your stay here. So we listen to some very, very good music. Why do we have to talk to your men? Did not believe we should have ended the war. And like, there is some truth to this. If we can get our people to mingle and see each other as humans, then there will it'll be easier for peace because war does kind of depend on dehumanizing the enemy. Like that's part of the value of propaganda. <laughs> okay, so that's everything. So let's talk about the espers, right? God, I'm sorry, the piccolo part is really good. But yeah, like, it's hard, it's hard to actually believe taking him seriously. It's ridiculous that the returners believe this. We want there to be peace. So that's the thing I've kind of leaned into in my writing because I just couldn't. It, once you start flushing things out and taking the time to question things, like you just can't have them just mindlessly except oh yes of course Gestal is inviting us to a peace banquet we should definitely go and eat dinner with him and then take him seriously and believe him that there's peace so 
earth ravaged by espers that emerged from the sealed gate. If we don't do something, they'll tear the entire world apart. You're the one who brought them here in the past. Do I blame this on him? Because I, I could... And they wouldn't have they wouldn't have been so angry if you hadn't tortured their friends to death. Just a thought. Is this the correct answer? Because this is the answer I want to take. They've gone too far. Okay. A bit too far. All of my ambitions faded in an instant. Do you believe him? Do you believe him? <laughs> Just instantly, I want to take over the world. Oh wait, never mind, I don't. Why did you want that much power in the first place. There is no excuse for the atrocities I committed in the name of conquest. <laughs> An adorable puppy. Yes, he's he's very cute. Yes. No, he looks like a dog and Kafka's laugh has always sounded kind of like woof 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 woof, woof to me. I could pick the angrier choices, but I'm doing gameplay. Yes. I'm being diplomatic. Diplomacy. The first question I asked a minute ago was why why did you start the war, right? In order, right? Just checking to make sure you pay attention. I truly desire peace. I absolutely, I believe you. I believe you, Gestalt. Sid means it. Take a break and talk to the guards, okay. Do I fight them? Oh, the, oh, it, literally a couple minutes. Okay. All right. Well, Savin, please take care of business. Oh, what? Okay. Well, the figure bros are here to take care of business together. Good job, boys. Just as we thought. Oh, is that in the saloon? Truly able to bring about peace. Gestal is quiet. This is not how he wanted you to do. All right. We turn, do we, do we resume the conversation here? Your war is truly over. Because it's not about whether you want peace, it's whether there will be peace. That makes sense. I swear here and now there will be no more fighting. A favor to ask. They flew towards Crescent Island. Please ask them to stop fighting. Magitech armor transport ship moored in the port of Albrook. Hoped to send it to Crescent Island in all haste. Yes. Top general and some of his troops accompany you, Leo. Hello, Leo, my friend. Seven. Oh, good. <laughs> he was the one with the principles. Uh... He should have, yes. That's the, okay, so I will apologize for anyone who's watching me for the first time and doesn't know this. I've been working on a novelization of Final Fantasy VI called Darkness and Starlight. So I've been pointing out some of the, the plot holes and story issues in the original game as we've been playing through the Pixel Remaster. Um, and some of them are things that I've tried to address. Um, Leo not retiring from it, not resigning in protest despite supposedly having principles um is something that i think is interesting and i'm taking him to task it is it is possible to uh i think make it make sense in character but i don't know that the game does albrook how many times have i drawn the albrook bridge scene over the years I haven't redone it, I should. Yes, nothing dodgy about asking you to sneak a shipment of war machines into neutral territory. It's specifically the fact 
that it's a it's, that it's a, a, a Magitek armor carrying ship. You're our only hope. Notice once again, this is mirroring what Bannon said to Terra. It's all about hope. All right, Chrono. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the Imperial base. We're also gonna go check on our airship so that we can see that scene. If Terra goes, I go. Yes. So here we go, okay, yeah. I smell a rat, it's hard to trust the emperor. Yes. So most of the party stays behind. Blade Tiger, I can see that, and that's interesting. I, I don't, like I said, that's not the, that's not the story that they're telling. Like, I don't think that that's intentional, um, but it, it is an interesting thought of Bannon being, um, yeah, I know it, it is good that the Returners are like, we'll kind of go along with it for now, but we're skeptical. You know, like we're not going to persist in fighting right now if the, if, if, if the fighting has stopped, but we are on guard. Bear a message from the Emperor. Your decorum at tonight's banquet and your grace in speaking to our soldiers beforehand absolutely take this man seriously. It's decided upon the following. All Imperial troops will be withdrawn from South Figaro immediately because you were nice. Not because the war is over or anything like that. Doma, which has been massacred. Why do you even have Imperial forces in Doma? Anyway. We'll unlock the armory. Okay. Personal gift from the Emperor. Dintinabulum. Okay. Your impeccable behavior at Dink. Dinner. I don't know what that one does. Yes. On a transport ship carrying Magitek armor. It's like, I don't trust that. So most of us will stay here where most people are. Oh, good. He got out of my way. Oh, it cuts down on random encounter rate. Nice, okay. Oh, that would make sense if there's resources or something like that that they need there. Hello, Bannon. Do you for the Empire to look for espers? Hmm. Oh. Yeah. So the we're kind of Empire destroyed itself. I mean, I don't know that I would say that. The Espers are uh, named random things, it feels. Alright. We're gonna save. We're going to go get stuff. Oh, they give us... Okay, hold on. So, since we've just got the two of them... Me. <laughs> All right, we'll go in here. 
We'll get stuff and then we'll go to the airship because there's a scene there. Yes, the, the pan flute is a, an excellent choice for the overworld theme and the counterpoint is really nice. A reflect ring. What else is there? A fair bit of money. Ooh, a sword keeping in the stove. I know that's where I keep my swords. I guess it's a fire sword. So like you want to make sure that it's not going to accidentally burn down your house. You know? Alarm earring. I don't, oh, oh, aha! Thank you. I don't want to have to fight anything with these characters, so we're just going to do our best. Yes, the uh, the exclamation point. There's just been there's been a, a lot of nice little um uh a, a lot of nice uh what's the word I'm looking for? Quality of life changes. Oh man, Null Girl, that sounds that sounds good. That sounds about right for a, a sword made of a made of fire. Magic artifacts right under the kettle, you never know. Okay, just trying not to die. I, okay, I would not have a sword made of fire, just generally speaking. Sorry, you have to deal with me singing. If you like me singing, by the way, do uh, follow. There is a there is a, a, a channel called Worlds Elsewhere that is a theater troupe that is putting on a charity concert today and I will be performing a bunch of VGM and other things um, today. The concert starts at 5 my time, so two hours from now. Um, it'll be me, um, two or three other musical performers, and a couple of, of, of theatrical performances uh, of monologues. So if that seems interesting to you and you want to, to join us as we um, as we uh, try to entertain you to raise money for Equality Texas to support um, their efforts in protecting and supporting trans kids. Um, I will, at the end of this stream, we will go and we will raid their channel just so that you know where it is, but I will be ending earlier since I have to do a sound check of sorts with them. Worlds Elsewhere link, yes. Um, I'm sorry, only mods have linking options. So if somebody could please um, grab that, I'm sorry. Um, grab that link if we have a mod handy. Uh, or is it just Worlds Elsewhere? Is that the exact... Because um, it's going to be hosted here on Twitch and also um, on YouTube. But since you folks are already here on Twitch, I figure that the Twitch link is probably the one that's most relevant to your interests. Um, I've been trying to share that on social media some too. But uh, yeah, if you... Worlds Elsewhere is the name of the channel. Yes, there you go. Um, please, please go give them a follow and uh, and, and expect... Expect what should be some 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 fun some fun uh, variety. Um, let's see if I can remember this correctly. There is there's going to be sapphic a sapphic synth pop duo. There is a um, uh, let's see. They were like goth punk folk rock. Um, there was um, there's going to be. A, a, a slightly nerdy folk rock singer songwriter type um, and then there's going to be some monologue performances so it'll be a good variety I'm pulling out some things that I've never performed live before from my like <laughs> vault of like 2014 2015 covers um, and I'm gonna do some things that aren't just from video games because it's not specifically a VGM show um, so uh, there will be some Final Fantasy VI because I can't not do Final Fantasy VI, but there'll be a bunch of things that you may know. So if you want to hear me sing and play flute, I will be part of that performance today. So uh, there, there's your there's your little promo. Um, I will probably I'll do that again as we get uh, as we get closer. But uh, in the meantime.
Let us see this scene. There is a scene here, if I remember correctly. For those who hate variety, I have variety. Mm. Isn't there a scene here? Is it in here? Yes. Here we go. I didn't know about this scene for the longest time. Sid is impressed with the ship. Sid's just like, yeah, we aren't gonna be able to fix it anytime soon. <laughs> Sid's just like, no, you don't get to help with my engine. <laughs> so that's just like, no, this is mine. You really love this ship, don't you? Maybe hard to believe considering how I live now, but I used to be a driven man. So, <laughs> in my family, I didn't do this intentionally. <laughs> But as I was writing the first scene where it's that Sir and Edgar meet after the uh, after the opera, they immediately started talking about they started talking shop about like machinery and stuff. But I was like, boys, are you are you flirting? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Um, I'm pretty sure that sets are at least is a disaster bisexual. <laughs> He's gotta be. Come on. We've concluded that Setzer is the party's bard, and I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> it's somewhat upsetting to me, and I don't know why. Stream's been going pretty well, Blue Glass. We're about to go do the scene at Albrook, so my Lock and Sully's fanatic heart is, is very happy about that. But we're watching this scene um, that not everybody knows about. I didn't know about for the longest time. He's driven like an airship, yes. Yes, completely, yes, he is. Really? It was my dream. It wasn't originally Setzer's dream, though. It's a dream he took from someone else. So, Setzer trying to abduct Maria, um, a lot of people think that they were lovers, and his abducting her in this is either part of their play, or it is... Um, the socially acceptable way for her to get out of a situation, a contract that she's obligated to be in. Um, so that is not something that I had thought of, but it kind of makes sense. Um, my, my, uh, my setzer is, a, he's a disaster <laughs> who didn't really think about things. He doesn't really think about the future. He's like, I thought it would be romantic. I thought she'd like it. Uh, yeah. There was a person who kept me working towards my dream, who inspired him to have that dream, in my opinion. He seems like he'd be kind of aimless, but I don't know if that's fair. Uh, friendly rivals or simply friends? Or more than friends, Setzer? Which must be the first to sail beyond the sky to the stars. Sorry, I don't think that that is the technological level that we're going to reach in this world. Along with the Falcon. Oh, right! The spelling of Daryl's name is different. Should I switch to that spelling? Well, there you go. There's a there's an optional scene that's a nice bit of character development for Setzer. Um, my Setzer, I think, is not entirely accurate because it... <laughs> I made him a little bit... I don't usually swear on stream, but my Setzer is more of a fuck-up than this Setzer sounds like. But there's really no better way to describe him. I'm sorry that that is the way to describe Setzer. He's a disaster. But he's more fun that way. And I think a lot of fan interpretations do have him be that way. Um, accurate or not. Let's run away from these guys. Yeah, Trust Fun Baby is kind of a, kind of in line with what I think of him as. My Locke, who overanalyzes people as part of his job being a, a spy um, for the Returners, uh, is like, I'm pretty sure this guy is the youngest son of some rich noble, who is probably a family embarrassment, so they gave him money to go away. The thing is, Sensor does definitely work hard on his ship. Like, there's no question. Yeah, Siren Star, yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> 
He is that. He is that. Huh. And I do like him a lot as a character and I find him interesting. I will say I think I probably took the most dramatic and serious possible interpretation of every character in the game because that is how I roll. <laughs> um, there will be the next audiobook chapter of Darkness and Starlight coming out in the next, hopefully, week and a half or so. I'm going to be recording two friends who are going to be cast as random guards in our Escape from Seth Figaro, but everything else is done. It's not perfect. Um, the audio quality will be better in future chapters. The writing will be better in future chapters because it's still a bit rusty. It was when I first started writing two years ago, um, after two years away from writing. Um, but I think hopefully it'll be okay. I've added some sound effects so you get to hear my interpretation of Magitech clash crashing around and so on. Um, but if that is something you'd be interested in, the thing is, I thought about, do I want to, like, put that, like, like as, like, a live stream thing? But it's, like, 45 minutes of listening to an audiobook chapter, so I don't know that that's a thing people want. Um, but, like, let me know if that's a thing folks want, and maybe we'll do that. I don't know, but it'll be up on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, it's Albrook time. You may or may not know this about me, but I really like Final Fantasy VI, but specifically... Locke and Sully's are my two favorite characters. They're my OTP to end all OTP. And um, as I've said at a few other points, like there are points that if you're a Locke and Sully's fan, like these are moments that are like in your memory forever. Um, uh, hold on. Not this, no, this isn't the right one. Uh... So the thing is, the scene that we're about to look at, I've drawn a couple of times over the years. Like, here's a version of it from 2001. So that was, that photo was a photo of my, my band, the Returners, uh, fighting Kefka, a Kefka cosplayer. So here you can see, this is like me trying to draw this picture like 20 something years ago. Um, I have, hold on, let me see if I can find, do I have my older, older art of this particular, because I've, I've tried drawing this one like a million years ago. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you see how old this picture is? This is not my oldest piece of, of Final Fantasy VI fan art, but this is from middle school. I was like, I don't know, 12 maybe when it came out? There's another uh, more recent one, which I don't know if I have that on here. It's actually from the last 10 years, instead of like 20 years old. Oh, here, just, just just for laughs. This is the oldest piece, or second oldest piece. I think this is the second oldest piece of, of uh, this is Locke, of, of, of fan art that I have. Then I have, uh, this one is from a couple of years later. Here's Sully's. Um, uh, I've got some old drawings of them, look, but I just really like them. Like, they're absolutely my favorites. Like, just like, look at them. Look at how much I like them. Look at all these sketches I did over the years of them. So many drawings. So much art. You'll notice that it's sort of centered around Locke and Sully's. I have a lot of a lot of sketches that I don't think I have included here. Um, let's see, what have I got? Do I have anything else new where I have the uh I have the Valentine's Day picture that I drew. Oh, it's look at how much bigger this is than everything else. Hold on, let's make this one smaller. Here's the Valentine's Day picture of them. I haven't. I didn't realize that the T edition hack has new Lock and Sully stuff. Because um, one of my because uh, my mod and friend Chrono has been playing through it and telling me kind of the stuff he's finding. But I didn't realize there was Lock and Sully stuff because that is that is stuff I'm interested in. I'd never posted anything on Caves of Narsh, no. I, I like I never really did did much with um with sharing my fan art. I, I did I did have some on uh Deviant Art a million years ago. Um but uh let's see do I have Oh here we go. Here's another old one. This one's from 2000 ish So this one I mean I had them on on maybe Deviant Art on websites and stuff like that. I'm sorry, folks, for, for those of you who've seen all of these pictures before. You can see them in my cover of Locke and Sully's Themes up on YouTube that I did. Um, I just stuck a whole bunch of fan art of them, because why not? And then there is, of course, um, 
there is, lest I forget. Oh, sorry, it's really big. Oh, this is way too big. Hold on. This is the thing that I keep talking about so much. Anyway, <laughs> this if you are interested in this, please follow me. It is 165,000 words. We're about to go to Thamasa. Um, I'm working on an audiobook version of it. Um, that uh, that chapter one, I've done the prologue of it, um, but chapter one will be coming out in the next week or so, and I may put it on here. Maybe we'll listen to it at the end of next week's stream. <sighs> Maybe. If folks are interested and if it's ready. So let me know what you think. Or maybe the following week. It may be the following week. Let me know what you think. If you're interested in that. It's 45 minutes, that one is. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's do the scene. The Albrook Bridge scene. And I'm still going, Wispy Whiskers. But I have finally started writing another project, and I'm working on the audiobook one, and I'm doing more music. So I'm no longer uh, on the same speed that I was. I was putting out a chapter a month for a while there, um, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep that up. But yeah, if you're interested in that, if, um, if, uh, Oh my god, Cyrus, have you not listened to- oh my god. The Irish flute is really fantastic, like it's just really, really good. Some life should start flowing back into this town now. The war is over, absolutely over. Who would have thought we would have ended up allied with the Returners? Who indeed? Oh my god, the music is incredible. There have only been a few songs that I haven't really loved what they've done with, but most of them I just love. Well, I would be very excited if you would read it. It's, um... Hold on, I'm gonna... Let me see if I can... Oh, if somebody can grab the link, if anyone has it handy... I can get it, maybe. Sometimes they have it handy. We would normally have our bot do it, but our bot is still down. I need to get a new bot or fix our bot or something. Thank you, Ampy. That's the full version. You can also read it chapter by chapter because it's very long with the full version. Scholar of ancient weaponry. Two weapons known as Ultima weapons were used during the War of the Magi a thousand years ago. Yes, no, I love this song. It is one of my favorite songs on the soundtrack. It makes a great uh, flute choir song too, just so you know. A blade, a sword whose blade formed from its wielder's strength. The other was a monster born for destruction. Yeah. Oh, oh, I haven't been through here, have I? I guess I haven't been to Alberg, have I? If you're not careful, I'll bust out my flute and start playing along. Okay, so this tells you Maybe you go to Zen and get the mag Magicite there. Nothing out of the ordinary to report. Why would you be surprised that the Espers have attacked the Empire? Although if you don't realize that the Empire is committing war crimes or you're you're in, on board with, with, with whatever madness the Empire is doing. You know? Oh, should I not have opened those treasure chests? I bet I messed it up. The World of Ruin will be the worst ever. What kind of painting should you do? I don't know. Set him on fire? Launch him into the sun, launch him into the sun. That's, that's my thing with politi politicians. So you won't get um, you won't get muted on social media for saying you want to fire someone into the sun, I think. playing the occupied song 
Even though I'm pretty sure this played um, Johnny C. Bad before, so now it's devastated because there's no people here. There's no Imperial soldiers here. Business has gone down the drain with the soldiers gone. Don't want anyone questioning my loyalties. Oh man. It's because this 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 place had played um the saloon song we're jazzing along, dance, 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 but now there's no dancing. So it's changed mood. More profiteering is wrong, Mr. Bartender. A fair point. No kitty cats to dance, 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 yes. I think I handled the Albrook scene really well when I wrote it because I wrote it with my whole heart. I will say that the the, the fanfic is mostly written with my whole heart. There are a few places that I was that I would go back and do differently if I could, and sometimes I make small revisions. But General Leo is waiting for you, and you don't know at this point unless you've played the game before what exactly is going to happen here. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I just love my whole phone so much. No, no, there's a chocobo statue. Why is there a chocobo statue just hanging out there? Oh my god, I was playing another game that had a fire-breathing chocobo, basically. It's not a Final Fantasy game, but it had an enemy that was a that showed up and was like a fire-breathing chocobo, and I was really sad about it. So, um, I, I haven't read Chocobo as a thing in, uh, in tactics or something. This armor's undergoing maintenance. Please talk to Leo. Leo's a character. Don't go into the engine room. You're not allowed into the engine room. We need to find them so we can make peace with them. Aggressively make peace with them. All right, Leo. Another Imperial, another Imperial general. So there could be a whole bunch of generals and a man I hired back in town. Leo does not have any sense of what's going on. And Locke is just like, oh no. And Sully's is like, I don't know what to say. And Locke is like, I have feelings. They didn't hire me to kill you this time. Interceptor! Woof! 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 I love Interceptor. It's a good puppy. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, Chocobones. That's a good name. I used to say Chocobo when I was a kid, but it's Chocobo. Now I know. And I will say it right. Alright, let's do it. Can't sleep.
That doubling is beautiful there. That's in the opera version, but I don't know if that was originally in hers, but that violin, that was not originally here. Just perfectly sitting above the mix. A little showier part for the harp. And the violin again. And then we have our little sparkly magic because a little bit of a little bit of schmaltz does no harm. We can be a little bit extra. This is, I think, the first time we hear this version of her song in the game. Because so I think I would remember if I'd heard this before. I'm sorry, that doubling just kills me. So good. Oh, I love it so much. It's fun that it's a flute. I have no objections to that. Forever Rachel is also primarily played on a flute in this. Good taste in instruments. <laughs> the dramatic tension here when I was young Yeah, the new violin line is fantastic. It's subtle, but it's absolutely beautiful. And it fits in so well. I don't think that they could add a variation because it's the opera. No, Skiplini, they've made some really, really, really interesting decisions as far as which woodwind they choose to give the melody to in various places. Um, it's not necessarily true to the original sound, um, but they've made some decisions. Um, it was confirmed for me that um, a science theme is played on a shakuhachi. I didn't think that was a shakuhachi because I thought a shakuhachi tended to play in the lower register more, but I'm not an expert on Japanese flutes, so. So pretty. So this, this moment of, of dramatic tension, like, if okay well I, I know I know I'm just I'm just I'm just saying like I feel like I feel like the decisions that they made were not necessarily representative of what was intended with the original compositions but I really like what they've done <laughs> they're doing something really kind of weird with the articulation and vibrato on the flute here though but yeah she won't talk to him and she's she's crying and so you have to read a lot between the lines here because we are entirely in Locke's perspective at this moment you know we don't know what Sully's has been through we don't know what happened after she teleported herself and Kafka away we don't know what happened to her um, but she doesn't have anything to say to him and he knows he messed up he knows he's in the wrong he knows he had no reason to doubt her but he does acknowledge that he did you know he doesn't try to deny it I don't know it's such a small moment but it had such a big impact on me when I was a kid obviously as you can see um from the uh, number of illustrations of that scene that I, I, I have have made over the years, you you can you can tell it made a bit of an impression on me. <laughs> yes, no, I do appreciate the character names and no, I always renamed people to not be all uppercase um, because that bothered me. Um, but then, of course, the characters who are NPCs have all uppercase names, and it's weird. Not my favorite. Hello, ma'am. 
Yes, we've been there. They've had some trouble. Oh, not us bribing them to let us stay here. Amazing. This is satisfying. Monsters flew out of the mountains behind the Imperial Observation Post and attacked Vector. Because people don't know they're espers. Espers are things from stories Granny told you. They're not real. Well, it's a little bit ambiguous about how Magitech is, 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 is seen around the world, you know? Let's do it. Oh man, I've only played through Majora's Mask once. It was a few years ago. I streamed it. I didn't, I was terrible at playing Zelda games at the time. I've learned a lot more about playing games over the past few years, um, but Majora's Mask is apparently frustrating to watch because I forgot that I had a shield until the very end of the final encounter when I had, I think, two hearts left and was out of fairies. So it was a great shonen hero moment. <laughs> Almost being defeated in the last moment, realizing that, wait a minute, perhaps I can stand and fight. Ah. But Majora's Mask is the darkest Zelda, so I liked it. I do really like Twilight Princess a lot, too, though. I played that one just a couple of years ago, and I really liked it. I really liked it. I liked Wind Waker. I didn't enjoy playing Wind Waker, but I liked the characters. But Twilight Princess, I liked almost everything about it except for mounted combat. I loved the cast. I loved the Link. I loved the drama. I loved the darkness. Took me a while to warm up to Midna, but she was an interesting character. All right. I think I forgot it's just the two of them at this point. Zelda punk? I don't know. I mean, I feel like Twilight Princess is pretty standard uh, fantasy. Keep out of the engine room. It's dangerous. What are you scheming? emotions have returned. Oh, this is upsetting. So he knew. The Empire used me, controlled my very thoughts. And now here I am cooperating with the same people. Not everyone in the Empire is like Kefka, but but they allowed Kefka to do what he did. There's a power you can't control, but you think you can. Made to suffer through horrible experiments. Like, there's some bad stuff that's happened. You know? It's a little bit bad. It's a little bit not okay. You know, we, we never have it fully spelled out for us exactly what Taro's life in the Empire is like. Just like we never have fully spelled out for us what Celis's life or Kefka's life or the, how they relate to each other or things like that. There's a lot that isn't gone into in detail. But uh, there's no ambiguity that Taro's entire upbringing is not good. I did nothing. I'm no better than Kefka. And Terra doesn't argue with him.
and she, she's, you know, trying to find her place in the world, trying to find meaning, trying to find, you know, love and happiness and all of those things that people are supposed to have. But she's not had her feelings for so long. So some people um, have a headcanon that Tara and Sully's knew each other when they were younger, that Tara and Sully's kind of had a thing when they were younger. Um, which, I mean, I've read some, some nice, um, emotional, beautifully written fanfic with that. It's not supported in the text that Tara has had any feeling or connection to Sully's. And Sully's doesn't seem like she's had that softness either. Um, but it is fun what, what people can do when they imagine possibilities here. Tara doesn't know. She doesn't know what these feelings are like. A good Leo fanfic. I don't know. I... <laughs> He's actually become a very big part of mine, but mine is not centered around him. But he, he, his role is much bigger because they're the two perspective characters are Locke and Sully's. And so if you're writing from Sully's this point of view, like Leo should be an important figure. Um, even though it seems like actually in the game, it made me, it makes more sense for Sid. Uh, I don't know. Um, but there are some, there are some good ones out there and I've, I've, I've seen some folks start talking about and thinking about Leo. So I imagine there's probably a few relatively recent ones. So that came out in the past couple of years. You're still young, so you'll know what love is. Like, Leo, have you known what love is? Like, it, it kind of feels a little out of place that she asks him here. And so people will see romantic tension kind of between these two um, based on that. But she's this, she's this very sad, hurting person who just wants to know the important experiences of being alive and human that she's never known. I like this, actually. I really like this moment a lot. Shadow doesn't get much character development, unfortunately. Um, and some of what you do get is it's very subtle, it's very understated, or it's optional, or both. Um, I would like to see a lot more done with Shadow. Yeah, the bass line doing a sort of counter melody almost in places is a really nice touch. Like, this is the one moment in the game when you see... Oh, an almost paternal kindness from Shadow. He's like, I, I can't answer this for you. You have to find it out for yourself, which is, that's wisdom right there. And he's like, he's trying, trying to talk kind of a little bit about what he knows and his experiences. And then we need some comic relief because that is a bit too dramatic. And we've had a whole bunch of drama happening prior to this. Like we've barely had time to breathe between the, the, um, the magic tech research facility and then from there like you know when we go to the sealed gate and then just like it's like explosions 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 um and we haven't had any comic relief so here is a chance for you to breathe and laugh and think it's funny or if you're me and you also get seasick i have problems with motion sickness so you're like oh he's like me but yes this is absolutely some comic relief And yet maybe Tara doesn't want to bring up her feelings around people she knows, so here's a chance for her to talk to people she doesn't know so well. Um. The lost power of magic can still be found on Crescent Island, weak though it may be. Can I get, can I get around to talk to anyone else? No? No? Okay. 
All right. I'll go with Silly Sweet Terry. You go with Lock and Shadow. All right. Woof. <laughs> I've I've fleshed out their relationship, so I have Sully's and and Tara talk about it some, um, but uh, they're both kind of messed up. <laughs> so uh, Sully's is sad, and Tara is also sad. <laughs> but it's not really advice. Actually, Tara asks Sully's. Does it hurt to be in love? And Celis is like, what do you mean? And Tara's like, and Celis is like, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> and then Locke shows up and she's like, oh God. <sighs> yeah. It's fun. I actually don't know how in character my characterization is. And I'm, I'm full of self doubt right now. But at this point, I'm in too deep. So I, um, and Locke is like, you shunned me. And I'm going to be a baby. Like, you didn't want to talk to me? Fine, I won't talk to you. And that hurts Sully's too. Ah, uh, you dum-dums. You dum-dums. Such dum-dums. Alright, so Thamasa. Which is, in fact, where... Uh, oh, I suppose I should have probably tried to get should probably have equipped uh, Madwin on her. Maybe? So she could have had... That's fine. We'll be fine. It'll be alright. Maybe. Maybe I should level up a bit. Or I suppose Shiva will teach her to her faster, so I guess she should do Shiva. We should... Where is... Am I going the wrong way? Though? There it is. Anyway, I'm sorry, I feel like I talk endlessly about this fanfic, and I'm sorry because I suspect it's probably more than a little bit annoying. Um, no! Punch, oh, I should probably put some gear on Shadow, shouldn't I? No! Punch, punch, punch. Please don't kill him. Oh my god. Maybe this is a bad idea. I love these characters very much. This is my favorite game of all time. Um, it's not the best written game ever. Um, but I really like it. Alright, well, Shadow got some levels. I should probably put some gear on him. Yeah, it would be interesting if if Tri-Talk and Madwin were related in some way because they're Tri-Elemental, and it would make sense for Terra to be Tri-Elemental like Madwin if she is Madwin's daughter, if magical power is in any way, um, if it is in any way, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, inherited, like if it's related to you. But I don't know what the Esper family trees are like. We do know in this version, which is not a thing that I included in my story, which is a shame because it would have added trauma and drama and tragedy. So it would, I would have I would have gone with what I'd known it. But Shiva, um, Ifrit, and uh, and Ramiru are all siblings, apparently. So who even knows? Shiva will get her um, ice magic sooner because we're going to need it when we get into the firehouse, the house that's on fire. <laughs> Alright, see if we can do this. Can we do this? Maybe I, should, maybe I should cast on them so they don't have a chance to sneeze me away. No! Yeah! Doggy time! Doggy time! Doggy time! Sorry. I'm trying to see if these guys can give me some experience here. Oh, 
interesting, Wispy Whiskers. Interceptor is, is a good dog. He's the only dog that I really know in Final Fantasy. So we have a couple of options here. I should be shutting down in about 10 minutes or so, so I can do a, a sound check. Um, or I suppose a tech check. Um, but, uh, so it's not really enough time to do Thamasa. Um, which is funny, because I will be writing the Thamasa chapter. So I guess, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. All dogs are the best dogs, is that so? Um, but we can talk a little tiny bit about thoughts and feelings about things. If anybody wants to, like, talk about a thing or, like, ask me what I think about something or whatever. Yes, the concert is tonight. Um, the event will be starting at 5 my time, so in a little over an hour. So I will be doing my tech check, and then I will be doing, um, din dinner. Din din. I will be eating some foods. Meow 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 meow. I think Interceptor is a Doberman. He does look like a Doberman to me. I think. No! Collies are pretty good dogs, too. Okay, so we do get a magic point. So I don't, I don't know. Okay, so our big discoveries of the week are uh, that apparently Setzer's the bard. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> apparently Setzer's the party's bard. No! She's the one I want to get experience! Um, a bunch of theories of who Gogo -Go could be, or fanon theories about who Gogo -Go could be. Some uh, fan and interpretations that Bannon might be a traitor? I don't know. Go go is Bannon with amnesia. Yeah, maybe so. Man, interceptor. Kid, oh, what, Tara? All right, excellent, good. Yay, okay, Locke is getting some strength up so he can hit things, so he should be, I guess, less useless. <laughs> oh, man. This, because this is the Masa, right? It's not some other place, it's the Masa. I don't know. No, you missed! Why are we missing so much all of a sudden? I don't remember this much missing. But I also don't remember this much Interceptor, so that's fine. Don't you dare sneeze me off. All right. I guess we're gonna see if we can get Terra. Okay, it's just close to Blizzard. Yeah, no, I think that is interesting that Leo chose to hire Shadow. He, so he's brought Selly's but, like, why would Leo not trust others, you know? We're supposed to keep the peace. Um, I guess maybe he thinks that the Imperial military, like, maybe they won't be able to, like, resist fighting because we've been fighting for so long. So he'll take Celius, who is a friend of the Returners, which makes sense, although he doesn't seem to know. How does Leo not know that Celius was a friend of the Returners, you know? Like, how does Leo not know any of that? How does, does he not know that she was going to, that she was scheduled to be executed for being a traitor? You know? Like, he introduces her to you like you don't know her. And she doesn't correct you. Or she doesn't correct him, and you don't correct him. Um. So, like. I do, I do, I do wonder, like, you know, what does, what does he know? Is it just that he doesn't know if you don't personally know? Um, her, but he knows that she was involved with the Returners in some capacity. I don't know. Um, and it's not really gone into... So you get the maximum drama of the silence between these two. Um, and I'm a big fan of maximum drama, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Alright, so we've, we've gotten our, uh, All right, so we've gotten Blizzard. We can get Blizzara. I shouldn't take too long. And then we'll put Madwin back on her. 
Um, yeah, so there's like, there's these little things that don't quite get addressed, but they make for a cool or dramatic or interesting scene. And not every story needs to answer every question, you know? Not every story needs to have everything in it make perfect sense. And it didn't hold this game back in any capacity to have these things. Like there were people, like I said, there are people who didn't like the World of Ruin because of its non-linearity. And so there are people who stopped playing and don't like the game because of the non-linearity of the World of Ruin. Um, but these other problems, like these are things that like fans debate and discuss, but it's not held against this game. You know, people who aren't like, oh, I don't like Final Fantasy VI because it has this. Um, so, uh, it's mostly like unnecessary to fix it, but I think that if it were to come out today, it, it would be expected that it would be fixed. Uh, you know, I don't know. That's, that's, that's my thinking. But I appreciate you all not minding that even though I love this game and a lot of you love this game too, so I'm just, I'm enjoying the novelty of walking diagonally. It's weird. So I'm used to having to do it like King's Quest staircase style. Um. But, uh, what was I saying? Like, I appreciate, I appreciate that you are, like, okay with me talking about things that I think could be done better in it. I just, I feel like there is a tendency either for the thing you love to be viewed as, like, un, uh, what's the word? Like, it's like, untouchable, like, you can't criticize it. It's above critique if you love it. Um, or everything needs to get torn apart all the time. And I don't really go for either of those. Um, yay, Shadow got a level. Um, like, I think that it is very, very healthy to be able to, um, to critique things that you love and just everything in general. Like, um, I think it's healthy to be okay with that. Um, I also think that it is good to try to look on the positive as much as you possibly can, realistically. Do none of the other Final Fantasies have a cast as big as Final Fantasy VI? Like, is this the biggest Final Fantasy cast? How big is Nine's cast? And Ten's casts? I'm, I'm trying to think now. I know that Final Fantasy 15 has a very, very small cast, um, but I haven't played any game after 10, so... All right, so 9 has 8, 10 has 7, 12 has 6. Interesting, because there's, what, 12 in this game? <laughs> I think, because they have to be able to make three parties. Or are there 14? How many characters are there in this game? Okay. 14, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't count the MMO. How interesting. Yeah, so they have been, like, like notably cutting down. What an interesting decision, because I do, I do feel that, from a story perspective, having more characters than you need, than you can develop, is a, is a problem. Like, my biggest complaint, one of my biggest complaints with Nine, like, I think that the story kind of falls apart in the, the, the later act, um, but... I would love to not have Queena in the game and focus instead on developing more of the characters that have more meaning. Like instead of Queena, could we have another couple of scenes with um, with um, uh, Freya, for example, or do something with Amaranth or do nothing with Amaranth? Um, in the Sweet Garden series, which is known for having a lot of different characters, um, they're very particular. First of all, having a lot of different characters is the thing is one of the things that makes the series distinctive but they're also really intentional about which characters get developed more and which characters don't and because there are so many characters it's okay to have characters who are practically nothing when you have somewhere between 10 and 15 characters that's still a small enough cast that i can expect them all to serve a purpose on your cast and they don't except for gameplay yeah amaranth's backstory is interesting his relationship with Zidane is interesting. I would like to see them do more with him. Like, I find him frustrating. Like, I find Queena frustrating. Admittedly, I don't like comic relief, and Queena is comic relief. 
Um, but, uh, but I find Queen of frustrating because I feel like they add nothing of value to the game um, and detract from, like, like, they take away time and energy and stuff that could have been spent developing characters that matter. Um, with Amaranth, he could have been a strong and interesting character. He has pieces there to be a great foil to Zidane. Um, but then they just don't really do anything with him, and that's really a shame. You know? So, yeah. Huh, so I do think that the 14 characters in 6, um... I wish they could have done more with more of the cast. I would have liked to see more with Shadow. I would like to see more with Cyan and Gao, keeping them relevant for longer in the story. Um... Because, like, the primary cast... There's, like, primary cast, secondary cast, a tertiary cast, I feel, to some degree. Like, the five main characters who get the most story scenes, character development, emotional relevance to what happens, and so on. Obviously, Terra and Sully's are the heart of the plot, um, and Locke is very important to both of their stories, even though he's technically optional in the world of Ruin. Um, the Figaro brothers have a lot of emotional relevance and plot relevance as well. Um, like, Sabin is... Is Sabin essential? No. It's Sully's, Edgar, and Setzer are the characters you have to have to beat the world of Ruin. Everybody else is optional. Um, it is really interesting. Yeah, and, 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 and most of Shadow's development, such as it is, is optional. And he's got a lot of really good stuff in there. And I would like to see more of it on the page. And that is one thing. If they were to do... If they were to do a remake where this game kind of unlocked its potential, I would love to see... I would love to see um, Shadow actually be fleshed out as a character. I'd like to see... even Because... As it is, it's deeply frustrating. His ending is really frustrating, and it should be frustrating. And just think of how much more it would hurt if you knew him better, you knew his relationships better, if anybody in the game had any inkling, but even if they don't, that dramatic irony, that narrative ir irony, I suppose, of in which, in which we know something and the characters don't. Um, but I would really like to see, I would really like to be able to see more with characters. I don't think I know that character yet. Oh yeah, no, I haven't gotten to Shadowbringers. I'm still in Stormblood, um, so I'll I'll get there eventually. Um, and I have I have plenty of feelings and thoughts about the characterization of characters in Stormblood. Um, but but in this game, like like it would be really nice. And wouldn't it be nice to see more scenes between the Figaro brothers? Bring Sabin to get Edgar and see him as Gerard, like. And have that really, like, drive home, you know? The, the boys need an arc, a story arc, and there's the potential culmination of some of their development there. I would love to see that. Um, I want Cyan to be more present in the story, too. I really like him. Gao is little more than comic relief with a tragic background. Oh no, it's okay, Funkle Siltskin. No, I'm still halfway through. I'm I'm over halfway through. I'm apparently approaching the end of Stormblood. <laughs> no. Um So far my biggest complaints have been that the golf bag prince is really boring. Um, but they could potentially make him more interesting, but I don't think they're going to, which is a shame. Um Yeah, so I think that's basically that's that's that. I've kind of gone on a little tangent here about video games, but I do like video games. So it's Final Fantasy, it's relevant. Um, so what we're gonna do here now is um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got the right, ad the, the right place for us to do this, but we're going to... See if we can raid them. I don't know if we can raid them if they're not online, but let's see if we can do this. 
Okay, yes, we can, in fact, raid this other channel. So they are not live right now, but I would like for you to f go over there, follow them. You can sit on their channel. I will be hosting them because I will be performing. Um, the, the event starts in a little under an hour, so you don't have, you have about enough time to grab some food, which is what I plan to do. Um, and, uh, and again, like, please, please stick around. Please follow this raid to Worlds Elsewhere and sit with them. Um, because there's going to be, um, there's going to be a number of performances today, tonight, including mine. I will be playing some video game music for you as well as other things. Some things you've never heard me play live before. Um, uh, some things that aren't from video games. Um, so, so you should stick around for that again. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a charity stream. Uh, it's charity concert, um, and not just a concert. It's a, it's an event. It's a concert with performers, with music, and with with some some theatrical monologues. So it's going to have a little bit of something for everybody. Um, but it, it is we are raising funds for Equality Texas. Um, as you may know, I I grew up in Texas. I'm from Texas, despite sounding Canadian. I am Texan Canadian, um, and uh, it's to try to try to raise some funds and awareness and support um, and show support to our trans community members as well. Like that, you know, we can stand up together, <laughs> even when it feels like we don't have much power. And then keeping with the themes of Final Fantasy VI. Anyway. I guess I'm gonna go because I'm. I, I guess I'm raiding. I don't know. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all later. <laughs> Bye.